What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another session of the Lost Song of Fandelver here on the Swindler's Den Twitch channel. How's it going, players? I'm here. You guys are talking. silence to just like linger for like <laughs> second longer. You guys oh, well. are a very talkative bunch, which is well, you know great for role playing purposes. We could talk about the thing we were <laughs> talking about before we went live, Chris. No, no, yeah, no, no. That's, that's okay. We don't need to talk about that. Um, you want me to put links? No. Everybody, go check out all of these fine people's socials, Twitches, YouTubes. Um, Equals not funny. Tommy Taco, Baka Zombie, and Zelda Nerd, nineteen eighty eight. So. Previously on Lost Song of Fandelver. I don't know what Tommy is doing. I think he might be <laughs> mad at us. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he just got possessed by. I'm but... just being a shithead. Um, anyways, yeah. So last session, you guys made it to Fandel Fandolin um, and met some old faces. Sildar Hall Winter and Grista, uh, who informed you that the town is in a bit of debt ever since their fight against the Orc Menace and the Dragon Scourge uh, cost them quite a few doubloons uh, <laughs> because they had to fortify their whole town um, with moats, uh, wood walls, ballistas, and uh, soldiers from other cities. So things got costly and they're they're in a bit of a rough spot right now in Fandolin. Um but hearing and seeing that Rumshu is a known hero in town, the the little tiny goblin friend that you guys met in season 1, pathetic in all regards, uh has now become a big great dragon slayer. You guys decided it might be in your best interest to head up to his castle to <laughs> to see how your old buddy's doing. Uh, you proceeded up the the, the mountain uh, with not too many troubles until you got to th this narrow pass with these two cliffs on either side, uh, which is what a narrow pass is. Uh, <laughs> and you saw before you a big boulder rolling your direction. That's where we're going to pick up. So you guys... What would what would you do? You see a big boulder coming. You're in this narrow pass with these two steep cliffs on either side. Well, didn't we do that? Yeah, we already we already last... did the okay, boulder. Special. Someone walked was walking up to us. I thought the way no, they jumped last... off the cliff. Oh, they okay, they jumped so off of the cliff. I was giving you guys a chance to do something else because I realized <clears> maybe you might have to try something else besides just jumping all the way. But um... uh, if you guys want to stick to the deck saves, that's fine. How to spell? No. Uh, I got, well, I got nothing. Uh, can I? So, I want to try and help checking. everybody else though too at the same time, <laughs> and just, just, just. If you don't decide, us. I'm just gonna take the deck saves. <laughs> uh, God. Uh, yeah. Take oh, this saves. is what I'll do. I'll right, wait until it comes. Deck saves, so. I'll wait until it comes close enough, and then in front of it, but away from us, I'll cast Thunder Wave. See if I can blow it backwards. Okay, so, so... Which will probably make an avalanche, but we'll see. I'm it's sorry. Boulder. One more time. You were going so, to jump out of the way and then cast Thunder Wave? Do I get the chance to jump out of the way, or is it just coming towards us and we get to do it now? Yeah, it's, it's coming towards you. So okay, you, you I'm not even going to bother jumping jump. out of the way. I'm going to okay. stay down and I'm going to Thunder Wave. Aelin's okay. just going to uh, prepare for uncanny dodge. <laughs> before I do uh, anything, I got a question. Did we rest before we decided to make this trek? We rest during the trek. Oh, we did. Okay, because it's like, where'd all my HP go? <gasps> yeah, you, sh you should be full up. It. Okay, so as this boulder rolls down the cliff, um, uh, Ivrin steps up and casts a thunder wave. What does uh, what's Thunder Wave do exactly, word for word? Thunder Wave. I mean, not word. For word. Uh, it's two d eight hundred damage, and you push something ten feet back. Okay. It says creature, but I'm gonna try and make this cool. Cool. All right. So you cast Thunder Wave, and this big concussive blast poof, pushes out and hits the boulder back ten feet. 
buying your allies enough time, the ones that failed, to re-roll. Volita, re-roll your decks. And, uh, and Ivern. Ivern as well, yes. Add a plus one, and I add a plus three. If, is it, do I get a plus one? <laughs> oh. You get a plus one, but so I can't roll six in my okay. whole life. So, Ivern, um, you blast mm -hmm. out this thunder wave. It rolls this uh, this boulder back, but then it starts to come back down the hill again because, you know, it's it's going downhill, and that's how gravity works. Um, but you buy enough time for Zorag, Aileen, yourself, to dive out of the way. Unfortunately, Valida gets uh, her foot kind of caught, and the boulder smacks into her. Healing 2d6 legendary. Uh, you take seven bludgeoning. That's it. Man. That's weak sauce, bro. Exactly. I don't. I'm not gonna waste any resources on that kind of okay. damage. I'm gonna I just take that. Bring it over to the to the actual map now. I just muscle through the water. Cracked her finger now. No. I like to think that she was so confident in her own strength that she just stood there and tried to take it. Yeah, she was like, ah, fuck this. I got this. She, she passed it up and over her head like a volleyball. She's the daughter of the mountain. That ball is kind of like her, like, young cousin somewhere. <laughs> like, oh, Jimmy, I know you. There are no rocks on the mountain. What the hell is this thing doing here? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck are rocks? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Baka. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, okay, yeah. The pun, so... the pun was so bad. Um... <laughs> The boulder hits Valida back 10 feet, uh, and she's now prone. Uh, you see in front of you that big white beast up on the cliff. Today I'm down to monitor everybody, so everything's going to be just slightly slower. Uh, up on the cliff you see this big white beast, and he goes to throw another boulder. Um, what do you guys do? Uh, Valida, you are prone, so you'll have disadvantage if you choose to do a deck save. Uh, you guys could... I would say everybody roll initiative now. Okey Ice Wind Dale now. Okay. Ooh. Oh, now oh. I roll a dad 20. <laughs> I'm like way bottom of the freaking barrel on that. Sweet. All right, so... Ivern, Valida. Oh. All right, so, um, Ivern, you see the the creature going to pick up a boulder and and throw it at you guys. What do you do? Okay. Uh, so two questions. First of all, how big is the boulder, and whereabouts did it land last time? Uh, last time you like, last time you thunder waved it, it kind of came back like this way. And then it started to come back down, like like uh, you were playing. What's the pinball? Uh, sure, sure, sure. And then it just kept going down the hill. Okay, so that's too far for me to outrun, yeah. unless I dashed. So, first of all, I will inspire Valida by turning to her and I'll say, "Get your shit together! What you doing?" You take that for your next save. Um, and then I will... How far away is he? He's, he's a little bit up, right? So... Yeah, he's probably like 20 feet up. Something like that. 125 feet. <laughs> okay, I will move... A little bit up to... I'll say right there. And then I will... Yeah. Pull out the sun card and I'll cast Fireball at him. Fireball. So he has to make a deck save. Okay. Does this Fireball like come out of the card? Yep. I, I pull the card out and I twist it and I point and the sun on top of it starts to glow until it forms this like like hovering mode of fire and then it pew! Straight over to him. I play Pot of Greed! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> now I can draw two cards. 
All right, so that is what it do. You, you. <laughs> he rolls a nat zero, <laughs> a nat nice. one for a zero. What's him? So that's full damage for him. Twenty-five fire damage. Okay. Massive big hit. Uh, and then with the rest of my movement, I'll duck down here, hoping that the boulder isn't quite going to reach me. But we'll see. Sweet. Uh, Valida, you are prone. Uh, you've been inspired by Ivrin. What are you going to do? Uh, you know what I'm going to do. Uh. Um, yeah, I'm going to stand up. And then move forward. By 15. 15, I guess, is kind of there. Um... Can I prepare or hold my action to attack the rock? <laughs> to attack the rock? Yeah. To okay. try and break it up a little bit as it comes to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you going to smite it or no? Well, I, well, I figure I'd ask. I, you you can choose later, right? That's how it works. Yeah, I can choose later. Um, I'm just trying to think if it's worth it to gear up a thunderous smite because that also pushes. Let me check. Um, just yeah, I'll I'll gear up a thunderous smite as my bonus action for this turn, but hold my action to for the attack. All right. Uh. Oop, 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 oop. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So you hold your action. It is now this beast's go. Uh. It throws the rock at you guys. Um, Valida. Uh. You can go ahead and make that attack roll. I just gotta make sure. Uh. Alright. So, this is another one where it says on a creature, it needs to make a strength save. What does a 10 hit a rock? <laughs> um, you know what? I'll say a 10 hits a rock. Right. Um, so it's 6 bludgeoning plus 9 thunder, plus it gets. Push back ten feet if you're counting it as taking the push effect. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't get my second attack then, because if I push it backwards, I'm gonna roll for HP for the rock. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect, I didn't think about this outcome, and I don't know how much HP rocks have. <laughs> kind of like a roll off here. It did. Okay. Yeah. So you needed the the smite because it wouldn't have broke it without it, but. Um, oh. As it comes rolling down at you, you stand, uh, you stand, you know, tough. Wait for it, and you jab out at it. Um, well, I guess no, your flail view when you jab out. How do you like do it? swing the flail? So this it would be it'd still be a mace as she was bringing it back to kind right. of whip it at it and then let it go. So the head goes forward and connects in the center of the Boom. rock. And as you do that, that like holy kind of energy cracks into the rock and explodes it into shards. Value to smash. <laughs> Let me read something really quick. Cool. All right. Uh, it it stays up there, um, and it looks kind of angry that you managed to survive. <laughs> All right. It is now Aelin's turn. All right. From Aelin's vantage point, can she see how many boulders that uh, this creature has available to it? It looks like it's got one more. All right, then. Then Aelin is going to use her turn, and she's actually going to dash forward to... To about uh, where was it? I believe it was here. Okay. Yeah, she'll move up to about there. Whoop. Wrong one. Ah. That. And she'll draw out her uh, short bow and pick shot at him. Cause I think that is just within range. Cause yeah, the, cause from here it's. Uh, 50 feet, and then he's an extra 20 feet up, so that's 70 yeah. feet, right? 
Excellent. So yeah, she'll draw her short bow and take a shot. 11. Okay, 11 is going to miss as the arrow flies past and just goes off into the snow. Ready. Then that'll be her turn. All right, Zorag. Zorag's gonna just run. Oh, you know what? He's gonna completely dash forward. So good, eighty feet. All right. Full Let's see. dash. Uh, let me map this out right here. Oh yeah, like right up on this dude apparently. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be right here. So let me move that. I'm gonna end up being right here as I come dashing. All right. And that will be my turn. Ivern, it once more is your go. Oh, did you uh, want to say something? No, I'm sorry. As I'm grabbing like my great axe. Gotcha. Okie dokie. So I will. I'll move my thirty feet up, and I guess off to the side. Um. I think he's in range. He isn't. He's just out of range. Some beef. Uh. I have a ten. The shatter is a ten foot radius sphere. He's twenty feet up, right? So even if I put it right here on the sixty feet, it wouldn't get him. Uh, how much of a sphere? It's a ten foot radius. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it wouldn't get him. Uh, you, for for cool points, it could uh, make the rock unstable. You might have to make a deck save to not fall, but I don't know if that's worth your action to you. And then I have to make a deck save for him to not land on me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Counterpoint. I can I can cast shatter on stone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it has disadvantage on the saving throw. So what I will do is I will pull out the d6 card. And I'll point it, and I will cast Shatter underneath his feet and try and make the rock beneath him crumble. Okay. So that's a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Wait, why does he have to make a con save if you're aiming at the rock? He doesn't. The rock does. The rock does. I think the, the rock, rock has to make a con save. Okay. <laughs> so it takes the rock. 3d8 thunder damage. All right. And, uh... Yeah, it cracks the ground. <laughs> the um, the troll at this point, you, Zorag would probably be able to figure out it's some sort of snow troll. Um, it, the the ground beneath him cracks, and he just in time starts to realize, and he goes to make a save. He fails and <laughs> falls. <laughs> down by Zorag, so I'm just, Zorag maybe, here, right there, yeah, that'll work, um, and takes, I don't think you normally take that much fall damage, right, for the 20 feet, It'd be like 2d6, depends how sharp the rocks are on right, the way down, takes 6, I'll take it, and that's my turn, All right, it is volley to go. I will move forward to get in line with Aelin, and then I believe I might be in range to do this now. I am. Um, she will hold up her hands in like a grip uh, motion, and I need it to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw, huh? DC of 12. 16. Yeah, if it passes. <laughs> <laughs> Good use of that spell. Um, yeah, that's all I can do, I guess, then. As okay. whole person fails. So it's this go. It's this dude's go. Zorag, this... Um, you start to see this, like... This, like, whirlwind of snow and ice is just kind of starts spinning around this troll as he starts to get mad uh you close the arrow with my tongue. 
Uh, you take... 3d6 cold. As the snow and ice starts pelting you. Uh, for 14 cold damage. Jesus. So who gets this? All right. Cool. All right. Um, so that's its ability. It's going to now come at you, Zorak. Bring it, with, Frosty. Uh, a bite <clears throat> for a nat 20, <laughs> 27, as he bites into your shoulder, um, dealing 13 piercing and 16 cold. Holy shit. Someone's been using Mentos. It's got you, it's got your shoulder in its mouth and it tries sticking its claws into your shoulders. It begins to try and rip you apart. Oh my God. For another nat 20. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm probably I will, down. I will I literally you, send I'm you this picture. I'm more than likely down. Um, that does 14 plus seven I'm slashing. I'm down. And then six oh, plus eight dear. cold. Holy shite. So he just bites into Zorak's shoulder, sticks a claw in, and rips like a big gash open in sho- uh, Zorak's shoulder. That's its turn. Just so you know, this token on the map is not tied to this character sheet, so it says I'm at full health, but I'm not. Oh, okay. That's what's going on there? Do you need yeah. me to like do something with it, or is it... Get, you go into... I think you have to do it. Yeah, whenever you go to edit my uh, player folder or whatever it is, the file. Oh, it's not edit to that? No. Weird. Is everybody else's good, though? I I think it's only because you had to it's mess around with his, yeah. his character sheet for new the new stuff. All right. Uh, Aelin, you can go while I do this for him. All right, then. Oh, boy. Aelin sees Zorag go down. She's not happy. Obviously. Uh, Dang it. Alright. Aelin is going to fire another arrow over at the troll. First of all, so... Dang it! It misses again, and this time hits uh, the rock behind it. All right, and then Aelin is going to move uh, 30 feet up to over here, looking for an opportunity to get to Zorag. I'm not down. Oh, you're not down? Oh, that's right. (laughs) We forget about half orc every time. I have one fucking hit point. Okay, okay. Aelid sees that Zorik is Fuck very up. much hurt. Very much hurt. You saw and, a blow that should have killed him. And she's very confused on how the hell he's still standing. So she's looking now looking for an opportunity to get to Zorak. And that's her turn. Alright. Um... Zorag, you're you're you got one HP and this blizzard is rip it's just whipping around you. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. I gotta look something up real quick. How does disengage work? Is uh, it an act? Use an action to disengage, an action. and then you can't be attacked. Opportunity attacks. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to uh, disengage from this dude. Mm-hmm. Don't if you have potions. Don't forget you can you can use one bonus action, a battle, for potion. I don't think I, I don't, have any potions. I don't think we do. Okay. <laughs> I think Aelin, Aelin has, has some potions. Yeah, Aelin I, has a potion. I have nothing, boss. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna disengage. So I guess I would go 40 feet. You disengage and you run back. And as I do that, you see that like I'm running, but you can see something's torn with me while I'm doing it. 
as I'm just like hobbling, just scrambling around. And as I'm scrambling and I stand up, you just see this fucking tail shoots out from the bottom, starts slamming on the fucking ice. And that'll be my turn. As I go into like a rage, my eye changes to like a draconic pupil. All right. Oh no. Ivern. I will uh, use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on Zorag. So you uh, regain six points of healing. And then I will... Uh, he's... I hate distances in D&D, they're so annoying. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll dip out like five feet so I can see him and then I will use my action to cast Vicious Mockery on it. Um, so it will need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And I will say, I'd insult your appearance, but I think you're just too dumb to understand. What? <laughs> Proving my point, aren't you? How much, how much does that do? Six? No, no, it's a healing. Did he, fail, did he, he fail his wisdom yeah, save? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. He takes three points of psychic damage and has disadvantage on his next attack roll. Okay. And then I'll move back to where I was, and that's my turn. Okie dokes. Uh, Valida. As Zorig is running back, she'll say, don't worry, I've got him, and she'll rush forward. And as she does so, a flurry of snow kicks up and she disappears and Misty steps right next to him. Uh, and it's going to take her swings. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go for the first flail. 16 for 7 bludgeoning plus... We'll put a divine smite into that, I believe. Uh, where are we at? 2d8? Where's my fast roller? <clears throat> 14 from the Divine Smite. Nice. Uh, so 21 on the first hit, and then second hit. If it hit, I, I assumed it did. It did. Yeah, the first uh, one. That one. That God one does damn. not. <laughs> That's fine. <sighs> and she stands ready with her shield up. Yeah. Uh... Alright, so this thing... Uh... It, it now it takes its its focus onto Valida, who is now um, run up on it and just smited the shit out of it. So Valida, uh, you have run into its cold aura. Yeah, go for it. It's weird that there's not like a save. That's what makes it scary. Fourteen. Oh, why does it roll so is it cold good against you all the time? Yeah. Is it cold? Uh, that's halved for me. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So you take half of the 14 cold damage as the blizzard is whipping around you, starting to to freeze you. Um, I mean, not fit, you know, I don't want you to think you're going to get frozen stiff, but... Um, the troll uh, goes to claw at you. Disadvantage. With... Disadvantage, 17. Misses. And an 18. Damn. Misses. Really? Shit. Okay. Yeah, I've got plate armor this season, baby! <laughs> woot woot. Awesome. Uh, Valida, as you... Roll me a perception check. Um... 17. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at this thing as you're battling it, and it almost looks like its wounds are starting to, like, reseal. Like, close back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aelin. Alrighty. Aelin is going to move a little closer down to Zorak, just over here, and she's gonna use her bonus action to thrust her healing potion over to him. It's like, drink it! Does he drink it? I don't know, it's not my turn yet. Oh, are you, well, are you using, like, an action to feed it to him? Or are you just handing it to him? 
You know what, I'll use it. Can I just use the bonus action to hand it to him? You can free action hand it to him. All right. I hand him <clears throat> the potion of healing. Sweet. Okay, so it's in Zor Zorar's got it now. On his turn, he could drink it. <clears throat> and now Aelin is going to use hideous laughter on this uh, lovely troll. So it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. You guys are hitting it where it's not very good. It's not very wise. <laughs> Uh, it, it fails the save, so um, it just... Volida, you're like in this heated battle with this thing when all of a sudden it starts going... <laughs> and it uh, starts to writhe on the floor with laughter. Awesome. That'll be Aelin's turn. All right. Zorag. I just had to read something. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll like grab it and just like, it's like I just cracked the top of the bottle with my teeth and just start drinking it. Mm -hmm. Uh, how how much is that normal potion of healing? What is that? Two D eight plus two. Two D four plus two. Sorry. Yeah. yeah two Damn. D4 I was really hoping two. to say plus. I was hoping the two D eight was right. Ah, uh, four. So oh, six. six. You get yeah. another six, so yay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do something stupid. So he's going to, like, haul ass back over there, but he's going to stay right here. Hold on. Let me double check something. Yeah. And yeah, for some reason, it's still not auto-updating my HP on this token. I don't know why. That's so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so as I like run over to there, I'm going to, uh, take this tail that has the reach property and start stinging this dude on the ground as he's laughing. All right. Yeah. Uh, you get, uh, advantage on that, I believe. So I think now it should be connected by the way. I realized I was connecting it to the wrong sheet, your old sheet. Oh, Okay. So that's a 27? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That or totally eight hits. piercing? As it's writhing around on the ground, you jam your great axe into it. It's great axe, right? No, no. My tail. Oh, your tail. Yeah, you bring your tail around and poof, womp it down on its stomach. I'd like to imagine myself standing like, like a xenomorph on the ground, just blah, blah, like trying to stab <laughs> it with his tail. And then I'm going to try to like swipe it again. Yep. <clears throat> For a wow. another twenty-seven. Yeah, that's another hit. Or ten. Ten piercing. Remember, Chris, every time it takes damage, it can make a wisdom save with advantage. Oh yeah. yeah against yeah, yeah. the laughter. Uh what is uh I it think it still only gets to do it at the end of its turn, but it has advantage at the end of its turn now. From what I'm reading. Gotcha. At the end of each of its turns, and each time it takes damage, the target can make yeah. another wisdom saving throw. Yes, correct. So Unfortunately, the DC is thirteen, so it did pass. So it stops it laughing, ground, though, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's still on the ground, but he's no longer laughing. Uh, Ivorin. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to waste the spells. Um. Yeah, I will start walking up. I'll walk up my my 30 feet of movement up to it, and I guess... I guess I'll, catch, I'll cast Vicious Mockery again, so that's a wisdom save on it. Okay. And I'll say, next time you fall over, try and take more care to whack your head off something. Uh, it fails, and uh, he starts, like, grabbing his head uh, as he's rolling around on the ground. He takes one point of psychic damage. Get out of head. Okay. 
Oh, that's what's up. Valida. Let's gear some things up, shall we? Uh, bonus action, Thunderous Smite. Um, and then I'll take my swings at advantage. All right. 27 for six bludgeoning plus two more d6 uh for an extra seven and then it has to make a da, 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 um, a strength saving throw all right strength saving throw here we go uh it fails i mean it gets pushed 10 feet away um, and stay in its prone, which it already was. And then I follow it and smack it again. Yeah, you, you like, you pushed it away and it just rolls poof, 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 over those 10 feet. Uh, and then you run up on it. For a 23. Huga down. Yeah, for seven plus another smite on top of it for nine. As these Goliath markings start to appear, it's, this thing was laughing at her, it's just trying to fight her. All yeah, right. So all that damage. Shit. Good shit. Um. So first things first. Okay. Uh, it starts as it starts to get up. The whirlwind continues to to go at you, uh, and you're gonna take another uh three d six or eight. Um, I have that to four. Right. Because of being a Goliath. And he kind of, he looks at you, all of you, and he's like, looks around him. And then he says, I not paid enough for this shit. And he, <laughs> he starts to, uh, try to run. So this him. way, and then he's gonna dash as 19 well. Nineteen for thirteen bludgeoning. <laughs> All right. Will this so, motherfucker yeah. be paid by? Uh, God damn it! I'm... You you connect as he runs off. You hit him in like you know his um his calves. <sighs> but he continues to stumble his way and try and shimmy up the rock. That's his turn. So we can still see him. Okay, then. Aelin is going to... First, she tilts her head confused. Is like, like, paid enough? What? She's gonna... run forward. Then... 5, 10, 15, 20... 25. Full... Her for full 30 feet. She's gonna draw out her bow. Just aim it at him. And she's gonna call out, Who hired you? You mom. <laughs> Alien, she take one d4 psychic damage. <laughs> Every time your mom joke is said, you, everyone takes psychic <laughs> damage. Wow, okay. Uh, she's gonna fire. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Ten. You love those tens. Yeah. <sighs> Misses. She's losing arrows. Who's laughing now? Let's bring him with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's her turn. That's all she can do right now. Zorag. He's muted again. God damn it, Tommy. This guy. Uh, this guy. How high up is that rock that he's on? That's... Uh, uh, 15 feet. 15 feet. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not bad. Uh, I guess Zorag would kind of drop his great axe. Like, he'd stand up and just, like, rush forward and, like, pull out this short bow he's got and just like start firing arrows at him. Okay. <clears throat> Whoop. 
Oh, it's only an 11. That misses. Uh, for some reason, it's like you. whenever you guys shoot an arrow, it kind of gets caught up in this blizzard around this thing and mm, like whips yeah. around and flies off. I'll shoot one more for shits and giggles. Eh, 13. I'm not Same good with both. <laughs> Unless it's against Yimmick. Yeah, well, that was a that was a spear, I think, or javelin, right? Yeah, that, it, it was it was an arrow. Bow. It was yeah, a bow and arrow. Oh, okay. he, he just rolled. He rolled really well on it for some reason. Huh. Yeah, it was like oh. <laughs> All right, Ivorin, you watch this thing, kind of trying to run off. Uh, it looks like it might be a little low though. I really don't want to have to use any more spell slots though. Is the thing. Valley is after me. She's probably got some shit. I'll, uh, I'll walk up a little bit, and I'll look up to it, and I'll say, "If we're bringing moms into this, I'd say I'd slept with yours, except no one wants to do that." And I'll cast vicious mockery again. Hey. <laughs> I like this guy. Okay, he takes a d4. <laughs> For whatever reason, has disadvantage on his next attack roll against nothing. One psychic damage, oh Grizz. Yeah, brutal. Hold on, I just gotta move him so I can. The HP was out of my like view. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice. Is that it? That's that's my whole turn. Volley does your go. Range weapons can't do non-lethal, right? Um, range magic can't, or am I getting that wrong? Yeah, I, I guess ranged can't. There's like specific arrows and stuff you can buy. Are you purposely yeah. trying to do non-lethal though? Yeah, because like she like raises her eyebrow in confusion after taking a swipe at him, hearing the he was paid for this and knowing who they're looking for. But she like picks up one of her hammer and trucks it at him to see if she can hit him with it. This is, wrong. Is, this is what I'm gonna say. Uh, you can throw this hammer with. And with the purpose to not kill if you succeed a athletics check or, or slide a hand check. What do you think like a skill, a good skill check for this would be? Um, I guess athletics to see how like skilled you are at throwing the hammer in such a way that wouldn't kill it. Okay. Nine. So, oh, what's, what's my inspiration dice? <laughs> what it it's a D8, I think. It is a D8 at this point. Hold on. Wait. 11. Okay, I was just about to say, I think you need to make like a 13 is what I was going to set it yeah, at. I mean, yeah. yeah uh, I still chucked the hammer. It's probably going to miss. Yeah, a 9. A hammer misses. It's just all a disaster. That's fine. I didn't want to kill it anyway. Is her hammer now stuck up there or did it hit the side wall and fall down? Uh, it, nice. Yeah, it hit, the, it hit the wall and fell back down. You can pick it okay, back that's up. That's my lucky nat 20 hammer from season 1. <laughs> uh, on this Not thing's so turn... Now. It dashes away. You better run! Bitch! <laughs> so. Uh, you guys can pursue it. I'm I'm not saying you can't. It's just that it's off the map now. Volley did goes to pick up her hammer. So do we... Are we all thinking the same thing? What are you thinking? Rumshu hired that thing to protect the castle. He sounds like a very wealthy and intelligent person. He's a piece to be doing that. I'll let you uh, make your own decision on that once we find. Very, it. very noble and fearsome warrior by the sounds of it. One who slayed the dragon, took the castle, and is now defending it by means of hiring a troll. Again, I'll let you make your own decision upon when we meet him. Is he a king? I hope not, for my sake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're not Can pursuing. Aelin pick up. Uh, Aelin wants to pick up the couple of arrows that she shot first, and and then look to everyone, kind of bounce on her toes, ready to dash. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. Me we'll find out when we go see point. him. Okay, Aelin, you're, you're able to get half the arrows back that you used. I used three, so I'll just say I got you one. You can round up. Okay, two. two. Thank you. Yep. 
just keep making our way there and hopefully he's afraid enough not to keep throwing rocks at us. Okay. Well, if Ivan keeps throwing those uh, vicious mockeries at him, he'll eventually fall down. <laughs> he regains know. HP. I can't heart HP. damage him. Yeah. So yeah, just I guess we just calmly go in the same direction that uh, he took off in. So he scaled the cliffside and then ran kind of off the trail. Um, so if you guys are free to follow, and you guys might have said that and I completely missed it, or you can keep heading down the path to the castle. Just go the castle. Yeah, okay. castle. Yeah. So... Uh, you guys keep going down this path uh, for probably another 40 minutes or so. Um, did we say earlier last session what time it was near around this? No, we. all we know is that we've been traveling for enough to have a long rest. Okay. So. It's just a, a day's travel. Dealer's choice. It's probably starting to get dark. Uh, like, not quite there yet, but it's, you know, night is coming. Um, as you guys trudge through the snow, it gets deeper and deeper the higher up this mountain you get, till eventually you start to see a break in the formation of what looks like naturally, uh, not naturally, sorry, um, unnaturally made stonework, so, like, you know, stones on stones creating the foundation and tops of you see like the top part of the castle uh, coming into your vision Uh, you come around the bend and before you is this big massive uh, castle I suppose this is it how impressive does it look looking at it uh it looks like at one point it will be very impressive. A very nice castle, but it's now looks like there's walls that are destroyed. Uh, snow's kind of like uh, swept into those areas. Um, it's it's seen better days, but it is slash was a really nice castle at one point. Got ventilation now. It's a little disappointing, but sure. Maybe he just really likes the cold. I want to make a Superman reference because that one dude looked like Superman that we freed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if he's if he's alone up there, then I, I suppose would be a fortress of solitude. But um, If he's alone, he probably has Droop with him. There's only one way to find out. We march. You come to... Um, trying to remember actually what the entrance to this looked like. I forgot to... Like, have Tommy's map ready to go from when he made this. Uh, hold on, I'm loading it up. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So, uh, you get to the entrance... Um, which is like this mini fort that's off of the castle, but you see like this walkway or this, um, yeah, this walkway, that, like a bridge that connects to the main part of the castle. Um, the door seems to be unlocked for some reason if you try it. I'll try it. I'll try the door. I think if we try this door, it will be unlocked. <laughs> yeah, so. you, would, you would think if he's hiring people to protect him, he'd lock the door too. So we'll see. Then close it properly. Do I get to kill him this time? No, not yet. Sorry, cuffs like a teenager. <laughs> Aww. If we kill him, do we all get a share of the castle? Let's not worry about killing him right now and what happens after. Let's talk to him. 
Well, isn't this where that dragon supposedly was? Yeah. So if Rumshu didn't kill the dragon alone, then wouldn't the other people who helped uh, kill it technically have ownership of the castle before us? I say we don't worry about killing a hero of Phandalin right now. Let's go talk to him, shall we? <laughs> Zorag looks over the edge of the cliff and he's like, the snow seems pretty slippery. Someone could fall. If there were a body down there, you'd never find it. Why am I traveling with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> she was probably light enough to just slide down all the way back down to Phandalin. Let's go in carefully. And I hold my hand on my new cutlass handle as we walk in. Okay. Uh, roll oh, me. You're going to swing the door open when he says that. Checks. <laughs> He's just going to kick it down. Stealth checks? Okay. Yeah. Aelin, come stealth, on. Stealth. You're supposed to be stealthy. Oh, that one. You're better than us. Stealth. You all go to step into the room and slip on the ice, and you all fall into one giant pile. Dora, your tail is in my ass. I don't have a tail right now. <laughs> then what is it? <laughs> my bloody tail. Your cutlass. The other tail. <laughs> um... Yeah, so you guys, once you get back up, uh, you start trying to sneak, not very successfully, through this uh, this part of the castle. Um, it appears to be, correct me if I'm wrong, is this the stables, Tommy? Yes, it's the stable house. Uh, it, what appears to be stables. Uh, it's very cold in here. Um, but yeah, it seems like there hasn't been horses in these stables in a very long time. Uh, you find your way to the staircase because you're thinking you got to go across the bridge you go up the stairs and at the top of the stairs you're met with another door to get out onto the bridge this however appears to be locked well if we can see it's locked it's locked from our side let's just unlock it <laughs> it's not locked from your side like yeah. i figured one of you tried to open yeah it. yeah That's what I'm saying. i know i'm gonna no. try and kick it in is it stone or wood because I don't uh, know. I think it's wood door with steel, oh. like, uh, metal reinforcement. All right. Can Aelin try to unlock it with her thieves' tools? Yeah, absolutely. All righty. So that is... Come on. Clicking on it. It's not doing its thing. Quirky. Did a little prompt pop up and ask you the input uh, thing? No, it didn't. Hmm. Okay. Just hang on. It's supposed to be uh, dexterity, right? Yeah. Dexterity plus, plus your proficiency. Yeah. So your proficiency right now is three, correct? Group should be. Yes. Yeah. So it, yes. in the little chat box, just do slash r space one d twenty plus three, plus whatever your dex is. Oh, there's, there it is, hang on. There it is, hey, yeah. This is actually a really easy lock for you. Um, you just, ch -ch -ting, and it unlocks. Uh, you're able to just open the door right up and go in. Awesome. Aelin's gonna look at the group and just ask, why are we sneaking in? What if we just call him? We'll probably come running. He's in a completely different tower. I don't think he'd hear us. We have to cross this bridge to get over there, and we're on a high mountain. You can try, but I don't think... Unless you can... Hey, wait, can you talk to him? Do you Are you able to talk to him with magic? Do you have one of those things? Hmm. Aelin taps uh, her chin, looking up. Is like, well... If he's within range, he might hear me. All right, Aelin's going to step out into the middle of the bridge, kind of look roughly in the direction she he might be in, and she's going to cast Message 
message has a range of 120 feet. Okay. Uh, you but it's also it's also reduced depending on how many barriers there are. So. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, now it's playing the wrong music. <laughs> Shit. I got this. Uh, so yeah, you send out this message, um, and it does not seem to to connect to the other end that you're trying to send it to. It's like, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. I was like, mm. she pauses for a little bit, trying to listen. Eyes closed. He's not within range. What about your birds? Oh. She'll take out a piece of paper and scribble a message on it, just saying, Rumshu, we're here. And write to Aelin, Zorag, Valida, and Ivrin in brackets beside it, saying, New guy. Fold it up and uh, use the paper crane ring and release it. Let's follow the crane! Yeah, you, you let loose the crane and it starts to f like float down the hallway across the bridge and into the uh, the building ahead of you. That's right! All right. Be careful on this bridge. <laughs> Stop following the crane. Okay. Follow across the other side. Um, and as you enter this building, uh, you are greeted with this big square room with statues that have kind of seen better days. There's skeletons littered on the floor. Here and there, um, and then a door to your south. But there are no people here. I see he's keeping the aesthetic. Never thought I'd have to be ran through my own dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing a great job of it, but I'm trying. I guess we try the door to the south, right? Yeah. Uh, you go to the door of the south that is locked again, Aelin. <laughs> Aelin will grab out her thieves tools. Boink. It takes you a little bit more time. The paper plane crane gets further ahead of you. It goes through like these slits, these um, iron bar slits in the door and just flies through and it keeps going. Uh, as it takes you a little bit of time to fiddle with this lock until you eventually get it. You keep walking through this this building. There's different hallways, rooms with statues, destroyed furniture. It's cold in here, but not as cold as outside uh, until you get to a point where you start to hear some noises. You hear, Ah! Took that! And the clinging of, of metal. Ting, ting, ting against stone. Ha, ha, ha. What the fuck? Be on your guard, lads. I'm going to pull the cutlass. Zorag's eyes. Put her, her hand on the top the of the cutlass. Aelin <laughs> <laughs> wants to sneak forward to see if she can get a good look at... Uh, take a look around the corner, or at least through the area to see... What's going on? I will do the same. Cool. So, uh, you eventually follow the sounds to this big, uh, this big open room. Uh, you peek around the corner. You say you were doing it stealthily. Yes. Only stealth check. Okay. Something Eleven. Fun. It's 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 a dope character. It's a dope map. It's a dope <laughs> it doesn't proof. count. Uh, Damn. Yeah. So you peek your head around, <laughs> and you see Rumshu uh, with a sword in his hand and droops on the the ground uh, on his hands and knees, 
and Rumshu's hitting the sword against the ground, making all these noises. Now take that, Obliterators! You will never win. Is it just Droop and Rumshu in there? Yeah, all you see is Droop and Rumshu. And then it's a it's a big open room with uh, broken furniture, ripped rugs. Uh, there's a giant gaping hole in the middle of this room as you look closer. And it seems like there's a chair that's been kind of precariously placed central at the back end um, of this room almost to look like a throne. Aelin's gonna do a, a knock on the wall. <laughs> go like, going, like, knock, knock, knock. Um, the, <laughs> the two goblins in the room just continue to do what they were doing. Um, you hear Rumshu, okay, now, you roll me a d20 and add the one. It seems like they didn't hear you knocking. They're really so engrossed in what they're right doing. Now. I'm so happy with what they're doing right now. You guys do anything? Um, Vali just been staying back a little bit. Yeah. I want to do something so bad. Do something. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, we, we, something is happening. Zorag do it, do just it. like walks out there, like he kind of pokes his head around. And he sees both of them, and I, which direction or where are we right now? Because I don't have a token on the map, so can you like ping it? Like you guys up there? are down here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do something real stupid. I'm gonna like run up straight up to this hole while like roaring. <laughs> okay, You're, give me an intimidation check. Okay. Droop is going to faint and fall into the hole. Maybe he does. Yeah. And it's 40 foot hole, so let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Not. Uh, <laughs> you, you run into the room. Ah! <laughs> like, I don't. Like, the, like the worst scream you could have mustered. Like, oh! <laughs> and you run into the room. And uh, let me see if Droop faints. Um, Droop looks at you. And Rumshu goes, what the hell? <laughs> uh, Zorag? Volley does really pissed at you. Volley uh, there. Is she, is she, he starts looking. Is she here? I would jump in that hole if I were you. He, like, Rumshu, like, panic, gets up and, like, runs over to this skeleton that's kind of near the hole and s throws it in. Uh, <laughs> and then he, like, runs over to this bench and he starts trying to, like, flip it standard, you know, upright. He's, <laughs> He's cleaning up. <laughs> I'm going to walk back. I'm going to walk back. And he's like, he appears to be cleaning the place in your honor. I'd give it a few minutes. Yeah. I'll, I'll let him clean for a second. Does he want some help? Aelin's gonna go and uh, help and like. Yeah, I'll start... go help too. Aelin starts writing some wrecked furniture. I was gonna get joy out of just telling him Valida would be like disrespected if this place wasn't spotless. <laughs> just the best of it. You're evil. <laughs> Ramshu. You, you can't you kill the dead? goblin, so it'll give him anxiety. <laughs> yeah. A Aelin's Aelin is walking in and starts doing the same as Rumshu's doing and breaks yeah. him and starts helps clean up, quote unquote. Uh oh ho ho Aelin, um what's up? He's like frantically putting things like it doesn't even make sense. He picks up like this old rusted sword and he like leans it against a wall and he's like Ugh. he's like that looks good there, right? It's like panicking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Rumshu, this is Ivrin. She introduces Ivrin for him. Hey, um, I'm not a decorator, but I think you need some help here. 
What about this vase? It's got a big hole in the front of it. You want to bin it or keep it? <laughs> Does anybody have flowers? No. You know what? I'll spin it around so the hole's at the back. I'm leaning up against the wall. You do know you have a large trash can in the middle of the floor. Uh, yeah, no. but it's a sentimental vase, right? Help me throw the body, Zorag. I'm not touching these fucking things. I do kick one in the hole, though. It's like this one right here. I just yeah. like... But when I kick it, I'm like looking down to see how deep this thing is. Yeah, you just hear... Aelin heads shatters. up. Aelin uh, heads up to the skeleton that's in the north end of the room and just starts kind of pushing it. Picks up a whole bunch of pieces into her arms and kicks the rest of the pieces with her feet towards the hole. <laughs> Rumshu, do you have any alcohol? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I was saving it just for this occasion, actually. Uh, where is Valida? She's around the corner. She's waiting for you to clean it. <laughs> uh, honestly, this is the best it's gonna go. Oh. Like halfway through, I want to go up to Droop and just stand above him. So, what do you do? Ah. Uh. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I swear to God, if you sound like Kermit the Frog, I will. <laughs> I I'm here playing caverns and campers. It's a pompous. <laughs> trying to do Tommy's version. <laughs> Playing covers uh, and coppers. Uh, we are playing covers and coppers. You sound like you have a really, you're really <laughs> sick. Well, he's up in the cold. He probably has a cold. The droop is because it's, I don't know. He's, he's got sniffles. What do you guys want? We were about to uh, finally see if I escaped. After Alien pushes the uh, stuff in the hole, she's gonna go and take a look at their uh, take a look at their game. Is there any uh, physical pieces that they have set up? You see this like clay, um, like top heavy, like like a character that has like really big shoulders, like with its uh, fists against its hips, you know, in a big like superhero pose. Um, just made out of clay, kind of like hastily painted, uh, really shoddy work. Um, and just a few like pebbles kind of scattered around it and stuff. Like they don't have a lot of pieces. Oh, good eye, Aelin! And I go up and I grab the figures and start walking over to the hole. Hey! No! Sorry? Ramsho, tell them! But, uh, Ivern, I think the... Those are keepers. Oh. Why? Why not? It's theirs. Put it back down. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go to... Yeah, I was gonna say, well, <laughs> no, I've been waiting for a moment for her to walk in, yeah. but keep it up. So thank you uh, walk in at this point. Slap. Vida, rub shoe won't give me any alcohol until you come in here, so get the fuck in here. <laughs> As I like walk back in. He will walk in. New armor and new aura and all. Hmm. Um. She looks to Droop and says, Put that away. <laughs> Droop, like, fumbles to try and get Obliteratoros into his pocket. Okay. So you guys are all here. Uh, in the room. Hey. Hello, Rumshu. True. Hey, 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 I wrote so you know. I wrote you back. Did you not get it? Oh, that was from zero. Can you didn't write that then? Somebody else wrote it because you can't read, I assume. Yeah, no, I I got a piece of paper and I had writing on it and stuff, but yes, yes, that was from me. Oh, that's cool. Um. So what are you guys doing here? We were told you might be able to help us finding Jeb. Oh no, 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 
No. 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 Come on, Rumshoe. My dragon slaying days are over. I'm retired. Oh, but here's the kicker. You won't have to slay a uh, Jeb. You just have to help us find him. What are those guys gonna do when they find him? Well, I want to turn him back into Jeb as long as he doesn't try to kill us first. Uh-huh. Okay. Um... I kind of have all these responsibilities now, so... I can't really be just, you know, up and living and going on adventures. responsibilities he starts to get a little uh s sweaty somehow despite it being so cold <laughs> uh, uh. I could really use a drink all right drink drink I'm gonna go get the drinks he starts to waddle off dodging your question uh still very timid I'm like looking at Volley to say that. <laughs> at least one thing hasn't changed. Aelin's gonna oh. Aelin's gonna look at Droop going, and how are you doing? I haven't seen you since uh, you were hanging out with Krista. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, you know, just. Playing guns uh, with my body. Oh, Speaking yeah. of Grista, she's going to kill you when she sees you next. Also. Oh shit! I was gonna say why? Why haven't you gone back at all, or at least told her where you were going? Look, I don't really need to work anymore. That's all fine, but you can't just leave. My new <clears throat> tribe provides. Again, that's all fine, but you have to at least tell her. She gave you a place in that town so that people would accept you. You just left her in, without a word. Roll me a persuasion check. Do, do, do. Persuasion. Oh, charismatic. 20. Uh, I guess you're right. Ivrin is looking exceptionally confused by everything that he's heard up to this point and is now seeing. And I will turn to Droop, or Rumshu if he's coming back, and I will say, So, you, you, kill, you killed a dragon, right? Oh no, that was my buddy Rumshu. Right, he, he killed a dragon. Right. In in your game. No. And the real person who killed the dragon, you're gonna help us find him. No, R Ramshu killed the dragon. It was in this building. Where is the corpse? Oh yeah, about that. It disappeared after he killed it. Right, it disappeared. Great! I turned to Valid and Zorak. This is a fucking waste of time. We should never have came here. I can't believe that's true. Yeah, no, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean... There, there had to have been at least a dragon attacking the town. It's not there anymore. Where, where else would it have gone? It probably flew off somewhere. Do you want to deal with these... I'm sure to come back. These idiots that are just sitting up here. You hear a as this big wooden box is being pushed <laughs> into the room. <laughs> is it boxed wide? <laughs> yeah. Yay. I like turn around. I'm like, what the fuck is that? That's boxed wine. Zorag's that's, eyes, like... That's expand. a gnormish <laughs> delicacy. Now, those gnomes might be batshit crazy, but 
to know how to make a good brew. And he gets out a dagger and he starts to shimmy the top open. <laughs> it's literally like a wooden shipping crate. Then he um, filled with wine. <laughs> yeah. He gets the Is there top any off. writing on the box? Uh, no. Okay. No. You look inside and it's just filled with this red wine. Does it smell like vinegar? I don't know what wine smells like. So if that's what wine smells like, that's what it smells like. Uh, it's, that's what wine smells like when it goes bad. <laughs> no. It doesn't smell like that. Okay. Phew. I just walk over to it and like place my hands on the edge of it and I'm just staring deep with love and affection into this box full of wine. I look at the hole and consider throwing myself in it. <laughs> Sir, how'd you guys get here? We walked. Speaking of, yeah. do you, did you pay for somebody to protect you? Uh, I mean, I don't really need to pay nobody. Because, like, yeah, you know, I'm a, I, I, I kill dragons in my spare time, you know? So, so we hear. Your spare but, time? I thought you were retired, though. Well, yeah, I was just, I mean, you know. You know. Zorak's just dumping his gobble. There are stuff. And just throwing his ways. Yeah, um, why did you run? Oh, shit. Yeah, you guys probably came up the, the pass, right? Yes. Okay, so you met Marta. Marty? Yeah, Zorak you guys spits out his wine. <laughs> doesn't kill him, right? No. Okay, good. Whew. He almost fucking killed me! I like Where's throw that? my fucking goblin at his head. <laughs> that is what I paid him to do. Paid him to kill people? Well, to keep people away. Why is that? Worried about your gold? Ah. Uh... There. There. Uh, at that volley, I'll walk over to him and get down, like kneel down to him. Uh, speaking of, you still have gold here, I assume. Oh. There. You um, know, Phantom can really use that, right? Uh, oh, shoot. Wait, what does it mean Fandolin could lose that? Fandolin used all of its money to try and defend itself. From the orcs and the dragon you fought off. Yeah, they're gone, but now Fandolin has to pay for that and can't afford it. Oh. I know it's technically your goal now, but it'd be really nice of you to help them out. Huh. This is my statue in town? I I did, yes. Pretty cool, right? It's very well done. Who made it? Uh, the, the, the dwarven guy with the smith shop there. Oh, he did. He he works with gold, too. Well, very well done. Uh, yeah, so how much gold we're talking? Like, he probably, like, I got uh, maybe like 50 gold. That probably do it. That. Probably more than that. Okay. What what do you need it all? I mean, again, it's yours, but what do you need it all for? I don't know how much is there, obviously. Uh-huh. Well, I got a lot of gold. I'll tell you what. The whole room just full of gold. Um. But. It's all frozen. Let's see. What I can get... There, just follow me. He leads you uh, through the building, um, down some stairs, into a side room that's got, like, a metal door, and it's, like, the vault room. And there's, like, a couple bags, a couple sacks left of gold. He shows you, this is what I've got. Is it all frozen in ice or encased in ice? No. This is the good stuff he's showing you. The actual gold he has. The rest is uh, down below. And it's all frozen. 
Well, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Um, I can. Why don't I go and sort it out for you? I don't know this guy. It's fine. You can watch me. Why don't you take me to where the gold is, and I'll start melting it away. Okay. Uh, but you're going to run into a problem. What's that? He begins walking you down the stairs <laughs> to this, uh, this great hallway kind of thing. And with these giant double doors, um, he gets up to the doors, turns around to talk to you guys, and he says, So, the door's locked. Uh, well, not so much locked as it is, like, collapsed. Um, can't open it. Right. Of course it is. This guy is so full of shit. Everything that he said has been a lie so far. I'm convinced. It's not okay. worth our time. Aelin's gonna go up to Rumshu and is like, Rumshu, why'd you make this statue out of gold? Why um, didn't you use something uh, that's like more long-lasting like, uh, like marble? Kind of looks... <laughs> Pulls you to the side and brings you down. Yeah, she she leans in. It's only coated in gold. The inside part is I, I don't know, but the, the dwarf guy told me that the gold statue didn't make any sense. I didn't have that much oh. gold, anyways. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, gotcha. All right, she'll she'll look over at the ballet and go. That statue in town is not solid. Apparently, it would have been way too heavy to move. She'll send a secret wink down over to Rumshu. <laughs> so, um, this is all great. I mean, you guys want to hang out? You want to stay? We kind of you know, deal with the Jeb stuff. Right. He's starting to gain followers. Followers? Yeah. The people who seem to worship the dragon thing he turned into when we last saw him. Oh. That's weird. But if you're retired, I guess we'll look somewhere else for help. Uh, can Aelin examine the door uh, to see it's face. <laughs> to see if it's uh, really like can't open or is it or if it's can be broken down? Uh, yeah, you can give me an investigation check. Uh, it seems like it, it's it's such a big door. It's so heavy. That on its own, it would have been hard to open. Probably would have taken multiple people to open this damn door. Uh, but the fact that it's also barricaded on the other side, there's no way you're opening this thing. Um, is there like a keyhole that goes through to the other side of the door, like some older doors have? Or uh, no. Okay. No, this is like hey. a massive door. Think like. Harry Potter door. Yeah, like, it's real big. <laughs> What's it made of? Is it made of wood or stone, you said? Uh, this is a stone stone door. Probably, like, marble or something. It's fancy. Are we Maybe... nearby any windows, or are we underground? Oh, that's a good question. Um... If you don't know, check your messages. Send me a message, all right. I'm thunder waving it. I'm really thinking about it. But anyway, those guys you really shouldn't go in there. Why is that? It it would be below. Below, below ground. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
uh, there's there's all sorts of monsters in there. Zombies and skeletons and we don't want to go in there. Aelin's tapping her chin, looking at the door, looking at the ceiling, and going, Is there... Is there a place that we could get above this room? I mean, yeah, you could get above it. I don't know what good that do there. Oh, then we just make a hole in the floor, like like the one that you were playing by. Oh, uh, you want to damage my floor? It'll last. What? Yeah, you could go spelunking in your own home. I don't know what that is. Uh, rock climbing and rope adventures. Why do you guys want my gold so bad? Pulls out the deck and I'm gonna kind of shatter on the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, uh, shatter is the 15 foot? Does it do damage? I forget. You cast already. It does today. do what? damage, yeah. It's a 10 foot radius sphere, so 20 foot diameter. Um, and it's 3d8 thunder damage. Okay, roll the damage. As he's like raises his guests just to like what I I mean you don't want to give it away, we are gonna go take it and then just the of shatter it in the door. <laughs> it shatters. Um cracks start to form on this this um marble this marble door. Uh it doesn't break through, but Rumshu goes, Ah no, no 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 please stop it. Stop it. Why is that? I don't know. Okay. Is there gold down there? Give me a second, sir. Okay. There. He goes and grabs the other three. Okay, this fucking person you're with is piece of shit. Okay, first of all. Second of all, I can't let you guys go in there. Why? I can't tell you. Zora, I hit the door. Why can't you tell us from Shu? <clears throat> I'm out of promise. Okay. Right. Aelin is going to kneel down by Rum Shu and look him in the eyes and go, How about if you're able to get us enough gold out of there so that we can help Vandalin? I know. We won't step in there. And I'll make sure Ivrin doesn't step in there. Oh. Um. You guys really need the gold, huh? Fandolin really needs the gold. It's really. And important. you are the hero of Fandolin, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. This is, you guys really want to do this. Well, um, how to find a different way. Why? Because I need that door. Aelin's going to go up to Ivrin and go, I've never known this guy to lie. If he says it's important, it's important. So no more breaky door. You are joking me. He says he killed a dragon. I Look at him! A dragon. Yeah, fucking right. There's no bones. I've seen dragon bones. I know what happens when a dragon dies. Now, There's nothing you, here. Have you ever seen a dragon who had an orb in it? Dharma? Oh shit! Dragons don't make orbs. Uh, what? Aelin is going to uh, kind of pull Ivern aside. It's like, all right, you didn't read the dossier regarding Jebediah, did you? No one's told me shit about Jebediah! <laughs> As we gave you stuff to read! No one gave me shit to read! <sighs> all right, Aelin's going to take Ivern over to the side and explain what happened when Jeb turned into a dragon and how an orb was involved. Did you say orb like the one Jeb had? Now. I think at this point, both me and Volley are like looming yeah. over, like, what did you say? 
Yes, yeah, she again get down. You said orb, I'm sure. What did you mean by that? I think I said jorb. You didn't, because that's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me intimidation? Ivern fucking hates this guy so Dude, much. He's he is a goblin. Uh, uh, um. 19. Yep. Mm -hmm. I tell you guys everything. I have to promise not to tell nobody. Okay? Yes. Right, Aelin, Aelin looks conflicted, like, it's my job to report it, so I'm gonna go in the other I'm gonna go up over here, and she'll start making her way away. It'd be best if you join her, Ivern. Yes, like, apparently don't tell them shit, or you'll end up with a bag over your head locked on in a fucking tower. You know what? I'm gonna stay. That sounds rough. <laughs> okay. So Aelin, Aelin goes far enough so that she's out of yeah. earshot. I'm so sorry. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so. When the guys left, I was... Uh, I, I was in a, a bad spot. Um, but then, Sildar had, uh, he had these new people in town. And he said, Rumshire, you're really smart and powerful and awesome. Can you train these noobs? to the heroes like you and help us kill this dragon. So, the four of us, we did that. We traveled around to all these different places and uh, we met a vampire and uh, what else we do? Anyways, turns out the dragon had an orb in it. We killed it in the top of this castle. The orb, which see, I'm, I'm smart, right? So we were up there and they're all like, I'm gonna touch it. I'm gonna touch the orb. I was like, no, stupid idiots. Don't touch the orb. So we sent all of our, we sent, oh man, this, this is going to make no sense to you guys. So there's this turtle person, right? She was one of those people I was training. She had a, 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 a robot, a robot, robot. And, um, it doesn't, it's like, it's not a person. It doesn't have a soul. It's really creepy. And so we made the robot pick up the orb, and we said, hey robot, it's name's Shard. Shard robot, go into that door with the orb. It was full of zombies and skeletons and scary stuff. And go hide the orb with you over there and shut the door so nobody can ever come in. And then we made a promise, never tell anybody. And is holding his head in his hands and looking down. I don't down. believe a damn thing you just said. And I start like put like hitting the door, <laughs> like trying to get the door. To get no, out. no, stop! That's the only thing that's gonna protect the orb. That door. I'm sure we you can find what? a different way in. Even even if I were to tell anyone, any of that, not a single person would believe. A word of it. You, I will believe you if I can see the damn orb. You're not saying nothing. Alright. Then looks like this was a waste of time. Wasn't yeah. it? With, I am more than happy to go with you guys to get the gold. But you cannot touch the orb. Is 
Zorak looks at Valida and he's just like, remember to breathe. It's not that. I'm not. I'm not there. I just. That's that's big, Rumshu. If that actually is an orb from a dragon in there, from what at least what little we know about orbs, I mean, if it's away from people, it should be fine. But right, that's why I put it down there. But nobody would ever find it. Very good, very good of you to do that. If we can get that, if we can. Get enough gold to help Vandalin and not disturb that orb, that'd be great. Wait, sorry, it's I gone? If we can get enough orb uh, gold to help Vandalin not disturb the orb, that would be great. Okay. The less it's interacted with, the better. Cool, cool, cool. I just gotta find uh, a way to do that. Quick question. Does Zorak still have his tail out? No? no okay. He goes away after our rage. Gotcha. Also, <clears throat> Rumshu, while I have you here, um, I see you already fixed your problem. Um, I'd made one for you as well, but it's not as good as that one. Didn't have as much time because I didn't know when I was going to see you next. And she'll pull this metal finger out of her pouch that's pretty lightweight because it's hollow in the middle. And it has like a harness to strap to the hand because that's all she was able to do to make it work. But I mean, I, f I figured I'd give it to you still, but that one that's seems to be doing just fine for you. That's really cool. Um, He reaches out to get it. You guys see his, he's got a he's got a gold finger now. <laughs> that was New Year's gold. I would have just slapped him instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, Valida. Um, I love it. Well, it's, it's, it, sorry, it's not better. So, uh, how are you guys doing? If you ran into Marta, you must be pretty fucked out. Zorag looks pretty fucked. <laughs> <laughs> We're not great. Maybe we should rest before we do this? If it's true that there's that many horrors down there, then yes, yeah. probably. A lot of them. And we should probably check on Marta, too. I think maybe you and Droop should check on Marta. I don't know that story. I should see him right now. I'm gonna fucking kill him. Okay. Told him I didn't want to have sex with his mother. Oh, that must have hurt. There was a lot of mother jokes. <laughs> okay. So, um, Rumshu, if this is the plan, uh, goes to bring you all into the, the barracks. Um, they're very when hard. When we go upstairs, Zorag just dunks his whole head in the box that's full of wine and just gets like ten good gulps. Before yeah. he starts going to do whatever he's going to do. He just drink a whole bunch of wine. Uh, he shows you the barracks. The beds are pretty hard. They're old. Um, stuffing pulled out of them. They, you know, they're nasty. Uh, and goes, uh, I would have cleaned up more if I knew they were coming. Um, but we can all sleep here tonight, and we'll tell ya, you know, we'll, we'll do some catch up, catching up. And then in the morning, we'll find a way in there. Alright. Thank yeah. you. And we'll take a break right there. Um, and when we return, we'll figure out what the hell we're doing in the morning. <laughs> it's so hard because I love Rumshu, but Ivan fucking hates him like so bad. Nobody should like Rumshu. 
Aelin likes Rumshu, that's why she walked away from the conversation, because she does not want to feel obliged to reporting more orbs information. Yeah. Alright, everybody. Go grab a snack. We'll see you in ten minutes. Peace. What happened? <laughs> I'm sharing <Like>. memes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just shaking his head like, no. <laughs> Well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, previously, I mean, not previously, but before the break, uh, they got to Ice Spire Peak. Uh, they got to the castle. They found Rumshu and Droop playing Caverns of Campers. Uh, they found out essentially some of the events of Doip, uh, which, by the way, this is, I, I forgot to mention this for five episodes now. If you haven't seen Dra <laughs> Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, uh, that is the in-between show between season one of Fandelver and season two of Fandelver. So there's some things Spoilers. in there. If you haven't seen, uh, if you're like, why the hell is Rumshu in a castle saying he slayed a dragon? You might want to go watch Doip. <laughs> so. Dragon of Icepire Peak. Dragon of Icepire Peak. Anyways, that one was run by Tommy. Um, so Rumshu. The only endearing things were my bad group voice. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, screwing love, over the entire Kermit the Frog ecosystem of Phandalin. <laughs> screwing the, over the, the economy. economy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, you guys, Rumshu brings you up to the barracks. He kind of peeks his head in. He says, Because we're, we're going to go to bed. Uh, no, it's a, it's a little early, but we're going to get up early and go into the. the uh, um. The, the big room. Oh, let's go to bed. And Droop comes, and you guys all go into the barracks. Where you spend the night. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to talk about on this? Well, Aelin wants to... Uh, since Aelin wasn't... hadn't stuck around... Uh, regarding all the information about the orb of the dragon she's gonna ask him so how come you have a mechanical finger now oh uh, yeah um so i was fighting this griffin right no not a griffin it was a uh, uh, it's kind of like a griffin but it's not a griffin it's, it's got uh it's a sphinx what is it called Okay, a she it's immediately wants to do an a Chris an forgot. insight check. Manticore. Manticore. <laughs> manticore. That's what they called it. They called it a manticore. Anyways, I was locked in in the hooded combat. All my allies lay on the floor below, struck down by this mighty beast. And as it called, I stuck my hand in and grabbed its tongue and started to pour out, but. The bastard got my finger, but I got its love. <laughs> okay, insight check, please. For well, Aelin. turned into a hard ass, apparently. He's like, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. He's a storyteller. He's the DM. Mm -hmm. oh, she you believes believe him. It. It's a great story. Oh my god, Rumshu. She's like, holy crap, how'd your whole hand not come off? She fully believes him. Yeah. No. Oh. <sighs> Seen some shit, but um, I'm sure you guys have been up to some cool shit, right? I mean, if I killed a dragon by now, you guys probably have killed like, uh, what's better than a, a god, maybe? Time mostly. You killed time? Or the shit? That's some serious stuff. Aelin just uh, kind of gives a pout to go, I've been stuck at work. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and if nobody wants to add anything, you, you, uh, you lay in your beds or whatever you want. You probably lay your own bed rolls out on top of these mattresses because they're pretty dank and nasty. Um... And make sure that Valet is on one side and Zorag is on the other so Rumshu doesn't do anything to me in my sleep. 
die. <laughs> so you lay down, and you begin to go to sleep. You're not sure how long you're asleep for, before you hear a... Ah! That wakes you up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Just leave it. It's nothing. It's not worth it. Rouser, they're out there again. I'm telling you. What? Aelin's getting up. What have they gotten into? He can't get a put her gauntlet on at least. Let the great dragon killing hero deal with it. He's so strong and powerful. I told you, Droop. It's just the wind. Or maybe there's weird cloak people we saw before, but it scared them away. This is nothing. No, I'm sure. I swear. I, I swear I've seen it. It's got spikes and antlers and it's faster than the wind itself. Okay, what the fuck are you two talking about? This is just a lot of the room. You're uh, swinging my axe wildly. Uh, Drew player. He keeps thinking that there's some monster up here on the hill, on the mountain. But I think it's just the wind. Or maybe, it's Marty. Or maybe Marty. Yeah, it's probably just Martha Droop. No, it's not Martha. I know Martha. The stung is skinny and tall. It's the stuff of nightmares. Skinny and tall, with antlers and spikes, and is faster than the wind. Yes. <laughs> Aelin's gonna look at Droop and say, like, Droop, would you like me to go check? Please. Aelin will put yeah, her bow she. on and whatnot. <laughs> Droop's taking the rich life quicker and quicker. And, and uh, <laughs> head out and go take a look. <laughs> we get up there and it's like a cactus or something. I'm going to be really mad. Really mad. Well, why don't you stay in bed then, Ivrin? I'll go look, and if it's something serious, I'll scream bloody murder. How's that? The last I... time you... I'll have to go with you. The last time you went by yourself, you ended up in a cage. Yeah, I think we should all go. You have One ten minutes, time. I can put on my armor. Okay. Guys, we don't have to do that. I, like I said, it's probably those cloaked guys that keep showing their head around here. They poke their head around, we, we send Marty out to go scare him. It's this whole okay. thing. What? Cloaked guys. Yeah, they wear black cloaks there. They think they're sneaky, but they're not. I see them. What are they here for? I don't know. Maybe they want the castle. Start ruffling around and valley his pack. And I pull out the cloak that you should still have. Uh, I think I discarded it. Damn it. I'll look in Zorag's pack next. <laughs> I definitely did not keep that shit. <laughs> Damn it. I sell. use minor illusion <laughs> to conjure the image of the cloak that we know. It's like a small baby version of the cloak. It's a rum shoe size version of the cloak. Minor illusion's up to five feet, isn't it? Is it? Well, yeah, no larger than a five foot cube. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you kind of conjure the robe. Yeah, they look like that. No. I'm definitely putting on my armor. We've encountered some of these robe guys before. They're the ones that uh, are now worshipping Jeb in his dragon form. Oh. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Aha. Uh -huh. Which means if they're here, they likely either knew... They probably knew about 
the dragon that used to be here. That makes sense. It was pretty big news. I heard it was in all the papers that we killed it. Was it in the papers, like in the uh, water deep? <laughs> um, man, that's a good question. <laughs> I asked the tough questions. <laughs> uh, no. Wasn't in the papers, but it was. Wasn't in the papers in the great north of Spine of the World. <laughs> no. It was in the papers in Fandolin. <laughs> <laughs> All the papers. Um. Anyways, where were we? Oh, I just put her armor on and using lay on hands to heal herself. <laughs> Did we? So we didn't get a full rest. No. And I will use my pearl of power to regain a third level spell slot. Did Did we get a, a short rest? Sure. Because I'm pretty fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use two hit die. Okay, yeah, use all the hit die you need. It's still not even close. <laughs> As you know, you're... what? Fuck it. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use one more hit die. I'm gonna use half my hit die that I have. So one more. Come on. Okay, that that's a little better. Yay. Yeah, once we're well prepared, we can go look at it. Whatever's going on. All right. So you guys start to don your armor. Um. And Droop is really freaking out. He's like, "No, don't go. It's a bad idea. I'm telling you, it's a demon." Stuff like really that. Really phoning it in this time, aren't you, Droop? No, please don't go. If it's not dealt with, it'll just keep coming back until it gets what it wants. I'm staying here. That's fine. Crawls under. Are you sure? We could throw you at it to cause a good distraction. Aelin is going to leave uh, her crowbar uh, with Droop. It's like, how about this? If something gets too close to you, you swing this at them, okay? Okay. You stay here. You stay safe. Okay. She'll give him a pat on the head. <laughs> he grabs the crowbar from underneath the bed. It's just hiding under the bed. Well, what say you, Dragon Slayer? Are you coming with us? Uh, there, I, mean, I guess it's probably nothing, but... Um, he goes to like uh, the mantle over the fireplace and there's a bow on there and he takes his bow down. <laughs> it's the stuff together. I don't know if I'm mad, more mad at this goblin or myself for allowing this goblin to have a fucking castle. And Never too late to rectify that. that. Feel free right. to change it at any point. Look here, Zorag. Nobody let me have a castle. I earned this shit. I walk away immediately. <laughs> as soon as he starts putting it, it's like, I'm gonna walk away from this motherfucker. There's that classic rum shoe lip from Toy. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> Goblin Guy. Which what happened there? to the other to rum shoe? What happened to the other people? Why aren't they in the castle? Oh, uh, my friends, right? I'm in my... Um... My underlings. Uh... So... Well, so... Donabella, the turtle lady... She went... To go research the orb. Some... Buck city or something. Uh, then Feverin, he, I think, I'm not really sure, he might have gotten lost in a book, I don't know. 
Then there was uh, Tarvalar. He's, he's like, you know, he's around. I see him sometimes. He's uh, at his own castle. Oh, great. This, another one in the castle. Sure, this is this is the cow man. This one. Yeah, the cow man. He's, uh, he's sure. at my... Actually, it's funny. He, so, he's at my old castle. Sort of. Not really. Belong I walk away tribe. and go follow Zorag. Kaelin's listening. Yeah, who's that like Kragmar? You guys know Kragmar Castle. Yes. That's where he yeah. lives now. He lives there. Anyways, yeah, so. Let's do this shit. Go look. So you guys, uh, where do you want to look from? Like, the top of like the castle? You want to go outside? Look yeah, out a window? The top of the castle. Okay. So you guys go up onto the ramparts. Um, what did I just do? Uh, give me perception checks. You scour the land Six. for any signs. 15. 19. Okay. Um, Aelin had a power nap. You... Uh, I'd say everybody, but for uh, maybe like Ivern's just not out yet or something. I don't, I don't know. But uh, you all hear like a a big troll roar, like like it just got mutilated. That's not good. I think Marty's dead. Marty, no. Fuck. This thing he heard was me insult his mother. I insulted Marta's mom? Yeah, I told you She's that. She's a wonderful woman. What well, the hell? In his defense, I... he started it first. Oh, shit. We have to go check on him. It's not far. You know where he is at. Nah, uh, he stays in a cave, just right down that way. Well... Why doesn't he just stay... Never mind. <laughs> oh, as much as it pains me, we should check. Let's go. Oh, thank you. Okay. Go. Oh. So you guys uh, descend the stairs, come go across that bridge and out the front of the castle. Uh, Rumshu leads you to this cave entrance where uh, he tells you that Marty lives. Um, as, uh, as you get to the entrance before you go in, is there anything you guys want to do either on the, on the trip there or it's only like 15 minute walk. It's not far. Or at the entrance. No, I don't think I have anything. At this point, keep in mind it is dark. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll light up a torch. Okay, you light up a torch. Cool. I'm going to. I'll inspire Zorak before we go in because I get my inspiration for a short rest. Uh, I'll say, try not to get caught in a blizzard this time, and um, stay angry. Okay. Great. <laughs> as as we're walking, Aelin wants to just constantly uh, be checking behind us to make sure no one is sneaking into the castle as we're leaving the castle. Ah, awesome. Roll a perception check. 19 again. Um, as you look around, you don't see uh, anybody around the castle. You do see tracks heading to the cave. Uh, could you tell how many are in the group uh, going to the cave? 
Uh, you are looking at the tracks. It's anywhere from two to three sets of tracks. All right, she'll let the group know. It's like, there may be two or three people that were heading to the caves. I don't see anyone heading to the castle behind us. Be stealthy. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, roll me stealth as well. As you get up to the entrance of this this cave in the uh, side of a wall, and you guys begin to stealth in. Keep in mind, Valida does have a torch, so that's kind of and I have disadvantage anyway, so six. Yeah, so she's making a lot of noise. Plus, she's got this bright light. Uh, but as you guys step in, the snow just kind of softly you know, has entered and is laying into the entrance somewhat from wind blowing it in. Um, you look, you finally walk in and you see uh, these like crystal, I icicle crystals jetting out of the ground. Um, you see immediately when you first walk in, yeah, there is what appears to be a dead dwarf uh, with like it's like leaning against some of those ice crystals. Uh, are you guys investigating that or are you just walking more in? Yes, I would. Okay. So, uh, roll me a medicine, an investigation, whatever you prefer. Lean over and check him. 14 medicine. So, um,. As you look him over, this is a weird sight to see. This dwarf uh, is very pale. His jaw, it looks like it's been unhinged um, and just outstretched really far past the point where it should be possible. All of his skin looks loose on his body and his arms have been like gnawed off almost like all the meat from like the uh, below the shoulder down is all gone um, and same with his legs like just above the knee and down is all all gone just bone and some muscle left his eyeballs are missing it's a very gruesome gruesome sight did Marty do this she'll look to rum share I don't know. I don't think so. This is a nice guy. And why is it here? I don't know. Let's ask him. Let's get in there and save him. If he did it, I'll kill him myself. He's still alive. And she'll stand up and start walking. Okay. Uh, you walk in. Uh, to your right, you see more crystals. There's like all these raw meats around this crystal. When you were near the other crystal where the body was... Uh, it felt even colder around there, so you could probably assume maybe he's using this as, like, some cold storage. It, they're out in the Arctic, so they don't really need it, but it's just extra cold by the crystals. Um, to the left, you see some sacks. And there are some skeletal remains in here, but when you look at the very back end of this cave, you can make out what appears to be a large uh, ice troll aka Marty leaned up against the wall um, doesn't appear to be moving I'm sure you want to talk to him hey Marty it's, it's run sure you okay bud Not a good sign. No, I'm not waking him up. I remember the last time I tried to wake someone up. Oh. Oh, shit. Uh, you guys go over to Marty. Rumshu starts to go. Ayla's gonna stay over by the entrance. She's looking to see if there's any tracks leaving the cave now. Okay, great. Uh, roll me a... 
uh, survival or a perception? Well, you know, we'll follow Rumshu, but I'll be behind him. I'll be perception. 12. I'm stopping in the middle of the room, like right here. Trying to buy, like, where the fire... It looks like there was a fire there. Mm-hmm. So, who went up to the... to Marty? It would be, like, right here behind Rumshu. Okay. Uh... Rumshu kind of gets down and starts, like, you know, trying to shake. Or gets, gets up, I guess. <laughs> Climbs Marty a little bit and was, like, shaking him. Marla! Marla! Come on, Marla, man! Wake up! As you guys see, there's this blood that's pooled around him. Uh, Volley, it would probably be clear to you at this point that Marty's probably dead. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work, Rumshu. Shit. You think those hood guys did this? I mean, whatever troops have been seen most likely is the one that did this. We should get back to the castle. Troops mm, think it's just a story. What do the wounds look like? Do a message check to see the wounds. Yeah, whoever wants to look at this thing specifically. I, yeah. Aelin, um, you do see some blood tracks leading kind of toward where Marty is, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. 21 on the medicine. Okay, yeah, you see um, these big rake marks across Marty's stomach, and his organs are spilled out. Um, I you didn't see this when you climbed up him, did you? I saw it. I was just hoping it was okay. I mean, he heals. He heals, guys. He'll be okay. I don't think he's coming back from this one. No, I think he's dead. Uh, uh, we should get back to the castle now. To you, looks like big claws <laughs> uh, caused this fatality. Fatality. Rumshu, Rumshu kind of dries his eyes, um, waddles over to the bags, and picks them up, and then waddles over to you, uh, Valida. There. This was Marta's gold I gave him. Okay. But we... <laughs> It's considering whatever to this isn't here. We need to go to the castle now. Okay. Uh, start heading out. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna. Hold on. As you begin to head out, uh, you pass by that dwarf. Uh. And you notice it begins to move a little. Ah. Uh. Go. <laughs> Go. You all going? And pick up from shoe like a football and start running. <laughs> start dashing. Okay. Um, anybody who looks back as you're running over your shoulder, you would see anybody besides Valida, because she doesn't have dark vision. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, would see uh, the the arms that are kind of like the skeletal arms with muscles still attached start to jut out further and longer. Uh, the feet do the same. The, the, or the legs do the same. They get longer and longer. And out, you watch the mouth, the, uh, the head of the dwarf begin to spread open even more as this skull uh, starts to protrude out of where the dwarf's mouth is, and come out, and the antler, these antlers stick out of the eye holes, and it starts to get up and chase you. Uh, Aelin <laughs> is going, Aelin's gonna call out, uh, Troops Monsters Real! <laughs> Yeah, so, 
<laughs> I'll that see you guys. That is creepy as heck, Grizz. <laughs> you guys make it out of the cave uh, as this thing begins to give chase. We're going to roll some initiative. Give me a second to clear this. Bam, 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 bam. Just want to see who acts first here. We don't have tokens, so. Yeah, sorry. No worries. Just letting you know, because I rolled 12. You all. Probably should have had you guys have tokens right off the bat with this. Um... It's me. <laughs> An Ivern appears. I'm I've first, that means that I'm the favorite. I've saved in the cave, so he gets attacked. <laughs> yep. Second the best. What about what? <laughs> Nothing. Just jokes. Just making jokes. Just jokes, man. He's Just half joking. He wants me to die. Rolling. Um. Now what you see before you is this. Ah. Um, oh my god. So, like, this dwarf's brown hair, dark brown hair, is now kind of, like, on the back end of this, uh, the skull and the beard is, like, hanging down from, like, the neck down its chest. It almost looks like this creature has fur because of the dwarf's long hair and beard. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, I rolled the wrong thing. Mark. Oh. Initiative. Come on. There it is. Tur. What? Did I just delete the wrong persons? No, we're good. No. Okay. Rumshu needs a turn. Yeah. Rumshu is in Valida's arms. <laughs> I'll drop him the moment I have a chance. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I didn't make Rumshu's character me. sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Ran out of time. He he rolled a five plus his dex, I think it was like four, nine. Okay. So you all start to run out of this uh, this cave as this thing starts to grow and morph and change, and begin to get up to what you assume be chase you. Valida, you you know the castle's direction vaguely. Um, sorry, I'm just organizing the things. Oh. Yeah, I'd be dashing towards it. So, Ivern, you would go first. I just, I need some good music. Where the fuck is my music? feel really unprepared right now. <laughs> it's a loss of a monitor. I'll do it. That's not even, that's not even good music. <laughs> yeah, this thing's chasing you guys uh, back to the, the hideout. Uh, Ivrin, roll me a athletics check as you try to not trip through the snow unless you're turning around to fight. Uh, I would probably cast a spell, but I'm still running, so... Okay. So you turn back and cast a spell. Mm hmm I uh, will pull out one of the cards from the deck that is that kind of blackish uh, drop lit on it, and I will cast Bane on him. So he needs to make a uh, charisma saving throw. Bane, 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 Bane. Can you put Bane in the chat for me really quick? Is he is. Okay. So you look back and cast this spell, uh, Bane, and it does seem to take hold as this creature kind of shakes his head, um, seems to be distracted and feeling off. Right, I'll spend the rest of my turn 
running. Okay. Uh, Valida. Full dash. Full dash in. Cool. You don't trip either. <laughs> up next, this creature uh, gets up and runs, and this thing is fast. Just like Droop said. Um, it gets up to... I'm going to see if it goes after Valida or Zorag. Or not Valida, sorry. Um, Aelin or Zorag. Aelin or Zorag or Rumshu. No, wait, no, Rumshu's in your arms. Rumshu's still with my I me. Uh... Okay. Uh, uh, Zorag. You watch this thing's charging up behind you. Full sprint. It's more of like... I guess it's not so much sprinting upright as it is... Just this weird sight of these four limbs, lanky limbs, just like chugging Galloping. as if it was, yeah, like a wolf. But it just looks so strange. And it's so fast despite this um, until it gets like 15 feet from you and you watch as it, uh, it kind of, it begins to change color, like kind of go almost ethereal looking and shoots past you and in front of you and turns around. As it passes you, you feel, as it passes through you, you get hit with this wave of cold. Um, roll me a constitution saving throw. You have inspiration still that you can use if you need it. How long do I have to use that? <laughs> you have 10 minutes since it's cast. How long were we in there, Grizz? How long were you in the cave? Because he did it before we went into the cave. Nine minutes. God damn it. <laughs> Perfect. So I got ten rounds. All right, cool. Well, I'm not going to use it this time because I got a good constitution uh, modifier, so I feel good. I don't feel good. I'm you can fucked. still use it after I'm you gonna use it. Fuck yeah, I'm going to use it. I was like, what? I got a plus five. All right, how do I do this? What do I add to it? You roll a D8. Right, I think that's how I think it's pretty There works. you go. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So thirteen. Probably still fail. Let me check its thing, because that that sounds close. Hmm. They're not right at there? Uh oh, okay. Uh you fail. <laughs> um as this passes through you, oh shit! <laughs> oh no one shit! Saw that. Whispered. You how, have like, how many times when you get fucking exhausted in your game? <laughs> Swindler's Den hates me. You do it to yourself in this game. I, did. Did you do? I, did. I used to. It's weird because I have it set the whisper every roll. It doesn't whisper that. I wonder roll. if it's because you're just typing it out because like the advanced dice rollers we saw too for the. When you were fighting the ice troll. You guys can see the ice troll rolls? Just just the um the cold damage from its aura thing. Oh the, yeah, yeah, that one was because I was just rolling it in the chat. So how much how much cold damage did I get? Uh I gotta roll it, but I'm just trying to check something really quick. Yes, it sent the whisper rolls. Very weird. Okay. Um so you're gonna take slash two d six. Well, you take three cold, so it's not a lot of cold as it passes through you, and you just get this instant chill over your body, um, and a level of exhaustion. It turns around and looks at you, kind of waiting, trying to block off your exit, your path past it to the castle. I guess it's Aelin's go then? Yeah. Alright, about how far away is uh, Aelin at this point uh, from the creature? Uh, So it's past you now. So it's past you probably... 30-ish feet? 
All right then. Na Aelin will draw her short sword. Mm-hmm. She'll run up to it and uh, try to uh, slash at it. Okay. 14. It misses. Um, as you go to like swing at it, uh, it ducks under it. Is that it? All right. Then. Uh, she'll use her cunning action to uh, disengage uh, back about five feet. Okay. Um. So you used all your movement to get up to it. I did? Okay. Yeah. Because it was 30 feet away. You you have 30 foot movement, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Then yeah, all you right. used all your movement already. Okay, then she'll... Yeah, then she'll just... Uh... Yeah, that'll just be your turn then. Okay. Uh, up next is Orag. Uh, this scary ass pale beast uh, drenched in blood stands before you just shiver just dear god and now that my nipples can cut glass I'm going to uh, pull out my great axe and just like start hacking twice down onto this thing to see if I can hit it okay there's the first one Nat one. Oh my god, guys, what the fuck is going second on? Second one. <laughs> Twelve. Oh, this, is, oh, this, is not, this is not the creature to fuck up on. <laughs> yeah, well. Too bad. We're doing it. That's uh, what's happening right now. And uh I guess I would try to like spin around it, like just behind it. Like I'm gonna yeah, stay yeah, with yeah, them yeah. like it. You know, like I'm just whack whack and then circling around. Yeah, you kind of circle around it, and you and Aelin are now standing next to each other. Hi. Hi, (laughs) Aelin. Okay. So, Zorag and Aelin are standing next to each other, Mm -hmm. which leaves one side of the creature open. Yeah, you can easily try to go around the creature. This is outside. There's plenty of space. Um, I'm about to cast a spell. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking to cast a spell here, but all my spells are AoE apart from Vicious Mockery. So, I mean, like, I guess what I'm asking... Put him on the edge of it. If you're looking to cast a fireball, you could put... You could place it in a way that you could just hit him. Okay. It would just be on the edge. Sure, sure, sure. Uh... I don't want to fireball or shatter. Yeah, I'll I'll keep running. Um, and when I see that there is enough space open, I will cast fireball and try and just clip him. Okay, roll it. So it's a deck save from him. Mm-hmm. And the total is sixteen. Which just makes, which uh, is really upsetting. Okay. But he takes uh, 16, 16 points of damage. 16, yeah. And as my bonus action, I will inspire Zorag, and I will say, FUCKING RUN! And that's it. Okay. That's an inspirational get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Inspirational GTFO. Valida, uh, you're running with Rumshu under your arm. Yeah, does Rumshu see what's going on here? Yeah, you Sweet. have him. He's facing the opposite way, so he can see everything. He says, "They're fighting the Valida. I think she'll I can kill them." Angle. He'll skid to a stop and turn around to run. Guys, I think I can get back to him with my movement, right? Because he had to move 30 feet, or did you say? Yeah, you could probably turn around and get to it. Okay. Um, at Like, when she's getting close to it, she'll pass the torch to Rumshu and drop him so that she can still see. Hmm. She pulls out the, the flail and shield and will jump in to swing on him. Where did my character sheet go? Come back. I need you. We're in a fight. Uh, first swing. 
blue. 27 for 11 bludgeoning. Yeah, it hits uh, this creature in the back who's staring down your friends with these sharp blue menacing eyes. Uh, it lets out a like a really strange, almost like like we would think of it by modern standards, almost like two microphones put too close to to each other, <laughs> kind of a yell. Um, um, and then my second swing. That one. <laughs> um, but as my bonus action, oh. As I pop my shield, I'll bring it forward and smack it into him to try and knock him prone. Uh, so it's opposing athletics, or he can choose acrobatics. Okay. Got an 18. Yeah. Pull up his... God damn it. It's another one of these where he's right after me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Every time I get to use this, it's they're right after me in the initial so they can stand up again. <sighs> Acrobatics. Okay, here we go. Uh, ten. I knocked him down for what it's worth. <laughs> there you go. So, you knock down this creature. Um, it just really was not expecting you. Uh, I assume you kind of like hit it in the back of the knee. It, yeah. It falls. Uh, is that your turn? That is my turn, unfortunately. You watch in almost in strangely fast way. It like like jump spins back onto all fours and then stands up um it f looks to you Valida um and it's eyes just pierce yours and all you your vision kind of goes black and all you see is the two blue dots of where those eyes were and your vision starts to, to darken. Roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, Use attacks so it doesn't get the bang. I've rolled four up. fucking nat ones this game. <laughs> Something weird going on tonight. Valida, oh you, uh, you get so afraid you can't do anything. You are paralyzed with fear. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Grizz! Am I actually yeah. paralyzed? Yes, oh, condition right. is paralyzed. Cool. I'm dead, everybody. He I did he put a funeral song in your playlist? <laughs> did he subtract a d4 for his deck save on fireball and his thing from Valida? Because he's I mean, my, my thing straight up doesn't matter for that. But uh, for so the the d4 for fireball that is a good point. So, so you take all that damage. if he if he's down by one, then he takes full damage. Okay. Yep. I will do that. And if it if he does it for value to two, I don't know if there's a value to then. It doesn't matter because it was just knocking him prone. He can just stand up on his turn because. But did he get knocked prone? Yeah, huh? it was cool. eight versus ten. Cool. It yeah. was a pride thing until I rolled a net one on the next turn anyway. <laughs> so he paralyzes you, and then he begins to run toward the castle. Oh, sorry, so Aelin and Zorak could take opportunity attacks if they'd like. Uh, yes, please. And I would like to actually now use my inspiration that I've had for a long period of time. Does he go past Rumshu so Rumshu can slap him with the torch? <laughs> no, there's enough space. <laughs> Rumshu hadn't gone yet because I forgot to put him in the throne as always. He would uh, be next. So he didn't. 19 for nine. He's ranged anyway, so he wouldn't have came right up with you. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I dropped him close enough that I could see. Uh, so you hit Zorag. Uh, Aelin using her inspiration, I had, I had said beforehand. So okay, 23. sweet. Yes, you both hit. All right. Uh, you both uh, swipe at this thing as it just lumbers off poof, 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 down toward the castle. Again, this thing is very fast. So, Aelin, it's your go. Uh, I don't know what you guys want to do at this point. If you want to stay in 
initiative or not, or you're giving chase, what are you doing? Uh, first, about how far is it now since it's moved? Uh, so from you, it would be 80 feet now. Oh. Oh, Aelin's pulling out. This. Aelin's, uh, grabbing out her short bow and, uh, taking a shot. All right. Dang it! I gotta tighten that string. Misses. I'm gonna let Rumshu go. Because <laughs> I, I keep forgetting about my... All right, Rumshu then Aelin is going to... Yeah, Aelin is going to... Uh, look over at... Uh, Valida and Zorag and Rumshu. And... And also Ivrin and uh, just go. Should I go after it? Go into the castle. I think I can catch it. I can't see anything because I'm paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, she'll encourage Zorag to run after it and move over to Avalida to see what she can try to do too help her out. Okay. And that'll be our turn. Um, Rumshu uh, follows your lead and lets loose an arrow at it. Uh, it does hit. Uh, and it lets out another one of those radio, or not radio, microphone-like screeches as it continues, you know, to lumber off. Um, it is Zorak's turn. I'm full dashing 80 foot to get right up next to it. All right. Yeah. You get up right behind it. And, uh, like I dash. So that's my action. Okay. Ivern. So I should be 60 feet away from the cave. How far away does that put him from me? So you're 60 feet. I think you're only 30 because you had to cast a spell, remember? To... And I cast a spell on the first turn, and that put me 30 feet oh, away. And then the second turn, I cast Fireball and ran 30 feet. I didn't really move again. Yeah, yeah. So doesn't that make him 80? Or, or are you, so where were you in reference to Sora? So, he would have been where up. I ended my first turn, essentially, I think. Um, I'm going to say that he is... Because you didn't dash. So he's nah. probably further. So he's probably a hundred feet from you. Be from me. Uh, I'm gonna map this out on a piece of paper just to keep it in mind. Uh, but yeah, shit. go ahead. That shit's far. <laughs> okay, sure. So for my bonus action, I will turn to Rumshu. It's it's a toss up between if he does it between Aelin or Rumshu, but because he wants to see Rumshu, he'll look to Rumshu and he'll say, "All right, little man, show me what you got, and I'll inspire Rumshu." And then I will move as close as I can get to the thing. Um, if he's past like thirty feet away from me, then I will use my action to cast Fireball on the other side of him. To see if I can not hit Zorak. He, he, Fireball's 120, right? Right. Um, Fireball can hit him wherever I am, but I'm still right. giving chase. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're going to cast Fireball? I'm going to cast a Fireball. Do it. So Who's it's a uh, death save still? from him. Minus a d4. Minus a d4. Let's do it. I don't know if it'll matter. <laughs> what did he get? He got uh, dirty 20 after the d4. Ah, shit, yeah. So he takes 15 points of fire damage. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's my turn. Okay, and so who's the closest? Okay, 
So when he takes this fireball damage, uh, you watch at, he takes it and then he shifts forms again into that ethereal state and <laughs> zooms through Zorag uh, God, again, it. just to the other side, just to the other side, 10 feet back from him. Uh, go ahead and roll me that constitution save. I'm using my fucking... Do I spirit. not get to make saves anymore? You can decide when you use your inspiration you... if it's after okay. the roll, but before you know the result. Volley I'm still gonna add I'm... it just for shit. No, I'm good. At the end of your turn, earlier. you get the re-roll. <laughs> okay. Did you already get a turn before this? No, I don't think so. Really. I, w I go in between Ivern and, okay, and so it. Because yeah. I didn't know if it's it's it doing it on its turn or not. You pass... Uh, no, do you have disadvantage on saving throws at level 1? No. No, okay. That's so, yeah, level you, 3. You pass this, so you do not get exhausted. Um, and I think you only take half the damage. So it's not a lot of damage again, so it's 2d6. Um, four, cold. He's past my... He's outside 60 feet of me, right? I moved uh, 30 feet, and you said he was 100 feet away, so he's 70 feet away from me. Yes. I can't cut any words in, motherfucker. I right. mean, he had to move... move well, back. I guess he did it. He moved he did it before he moved back. Me. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, never mind. So good. All right. Uh, that's your turn. Volley, to, you watch all that go down. Fireball drops on this thing. I uh, think I'm facing the wrong way. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 never mind. But you're, <laughs> you just, you're, you're like frozen in fear. Um, just these blue eyes, like, just constantly, like, fading in and out, like, circling around you. Um, Scared out of your fucking mind. Roll me a constitution save. Unless there's something else you want to try. I don't think. 15 because of my aura. 15. You make it. Whoa. Uh, you, how do you find, how do you pull yourself out of this, this fear? Um, knowing that this thing is running back to the castle and that troop is there. <laughs> no, I'm not letting another person die and she pushes through uh to to get out of it sweet it is now this beast's turn oh. uh, he it is going to i think what it would do uh, Zorag's able to keep up with it. So I think what it's going to do is look at Zorag. And Zorag, roll me a constitution save. As oh, the bright, fuck. piercing eyes stare at you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Love me. Love me. I'm going to add my shit because I don't know what the save is. <laughs> Which shit? I got. I still have inspiration from whenever he's like... Get like run the fuck away or whatever. So you're saying twenty? That's a twenty-one. No, it's just, no, it's, no, it's, it's part of inspiration. Okay, gotcha. yeah, yeah, part of inspiration. I didn't know. If that's one d eight. So D8 yeah, inspiration, pretty high. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you feel it's starting to like cause fear and doubt in your mind, and that that blackness kind of takes over your vision, but you fight it off. You uh, you're I don't know what what saves you from it, but um, it notices it doesn't take effect and it begins to sprint around you and again toward the castle. So now, now it's, how far away was this thing? This is now. No, how far feet. away was he whenever he stared me. at me? 10 feet. 10 feet? Okay. So it's only 50 feet in front of. Sorry, no, because it's not using. It's, it's only 30 feet in front of you right now. Oh, I'm about to fuck this thing up. <laughs> well, careful there, sir. Careful. All right then. So, after seeing that uh, Valida snapped out of it, she's kind of gives a sigh of relief, going, "All right, come on, this way," and she'll start. She'll start running. Uh, she's going to run her thirty feet. Use cunning action, her bonus action 
to dash. And uh, so at the 60 feet mark, how far away is she from the creature? We're 80 and then back trying to... Um, Am I within 80 so feet of it? You're dashing, correct? I so, use my cunning action yeah. uh, to dash, so I still have. Uh, I still it could is use my short bow. 90 feet in front of you, then. Whew. That'd be disadvantaged, no, then. I'm so sorry. It mm -hmm. is 40 feet in front of you. Math's hard. That's okay. Yes, math is hard. <laughs> All right, then Aelin is going to, again, try with her short bow and fire at its butt. Miss. Here it is. This bow is not cutting, not cutting it for you. This bow hates the cold weather, I tell you. I got to get a new string for yeah. it. All right. Aelin is uh, uh, now cussing in Elvish blaming her bow when she should be cussing at herself. And that'll be her turn. Zorag, this thing continues to sprint off toward the castle. You're muted. Yeah, might be muted. I just want to read something to see how many times I can use it. It doesn't give me a list of uses. It just says whenever I see something try to attack within 10 feet, so... I'm gonna try something stupid. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna like run something. since how it's only thirty foot in front of me. Yeah. Yep. You said okay, cool. So I can get in front of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like sprint to like run up in front of it, and I'm just gonna look at it and I'm gonna say, uh, "I'll show you fear." And as I just like roar and my pupil changes and my tail shoots out. Uh, from behind me, and I just kind of come in, uh, come down twice with uh, my great axe. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I almost hit the wrong button. So, nat one and 18. <laughs> the nat one misses. The 18 connects as you cut across its stomach. Uh,. Dealing a good chunk of damage. Do you rage? It doesn't have rage. On. Oh, I don't have rage connected to that. I don't have it is fucking it, ticked. Is it plus two or plus three now? Uh, it's I I don't know. It should still only be plus two, I think. Yeah, it's still only plus two. Okay. Well, cool. I added that. My bad. I forgot to pick that. You're fine. Yeah. Uh. That was Zorg's go? Yep. Okay, so when you hit it, again, do it. Shoots through your body 30 feet. Well, technically, so you're, it would be 25 feet past you and through you. Roll me that con save. Oh, I'm eventually not going to be able to run. 17, please tell me I pass. Uh, you passed. Take and only take the half damage. And then half of that. Uh, no, never mind, because you're no. not that kind of barbarian. Half of, se uh, half of seven. Half of seven. Yeah. Sweet. Ivern. Are she going to turn? I inspired a little fucker. Oh, Rumshu? Yeah. yeah you, We're having you him go, go after him. Right. I keep fucking forgetting I can do oh, a gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. attack. I could have been hitting every fucking one of these attacks. <laughs> so. The wine. The wine is affecting him. The wine yes. in a long flight. At the end of my last turn, he was 70 feet away from me. I'm going to run 30 feet. But he moved as well. Sorry. I got distracted pulling out from Shoe's token. Uh... What's your question? Uh, how close is he to me if I move 30 feet up from where I was? Feet up from where you were. He was 100 before, correct? 
It was 70 before. It was 70 before. And then he just went 25. So... 95? He's 95 feet from you. Okay, and that's... That's with me moving the 30 feet? Yeah. Correct? Okay. Oh, no. With the 30 feet, subtract that. 65 feet. Oh, 65. 65 is still not enough for my fucking... <sighs> okay. Um... So, I'm going to do the same thing again. I will cast Fireball at it. My last third level. I'm burning all these damn spells. Um, so that's a deck save minus a d4 for him. Okay. Minus three, eleven. He fails. Thirty points of fire damage. Ooh, that's a big hit. Uh, this thing is looking kind of rough. Kind of rough. Cool. And then with my bonus action, I will use my second to last bardic inspiration to inspire Zorag. Um, <laughs> and I will say... Yeah, I'll say, um... You know... For a creature made of bones, he's got more of a spine than you do. That's my turn. That doesn't okay. inspire me. It makes me want to like fucking throw my javelin at you. <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm talking about the creature, and then you've got more. Never mind. Oh, okay. Take it however you want, Zorak. Take it however you want. So Ivern should have now been past Volley. Um, he's well past me at this point. Because yeah. when. So, I also don't think Rumju went last turn. Especially because I am effectively out of the fight at this point. <laughs> he went last turn, I rolled it on Aelin's turn and added it. Because okay. I said I said at the end of her turn, Rumshu follows your lead and shoots an arrow. Okay. Um, okay. But I'll take I'll take Rumshu's turn at the after your turn from now on. Okay. I mean, I'll dash 60. <laughs> yeah. That's all I can do. Uh, Rumshu runs 30, fires an arrow... He's got inspiration. He's got he inspiration. It. It's a D8? Yes, it is. Where are my damn D8s? Damn it. Here they are. You never use them. Uh, With the inspiration, is that enough? And 17. Yes. Okay. The arrow, thanks to the inspiration, sings true and hits a shoulder blade of this creature. It is still up. Uh, it's its turn. Uh, it's going to just continue to dash. <sighs> Takes off. Before it does, though, it does look back one more time at Zorag. And uh, give it that glare one more time. So make me a constitution saving throw. Oh, wait, no. It, that's not an ability. I keep forgetting. Sorry, it just dashes. It doesn't do that. <laughs> oh, because I don't have a disadvantage on my fucking shit? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> it, I just... I, I said that it dashed, and then I was going to have it paralyze you because that made sense in my head, but it can only dash or paralyze, if that makes sense. So it just yeah. dashed. I'm assuming it's an action, so that's why. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Now I can't catch this thing. Uh, Aelin, this thing is now. Um, roll me perceptions. Perception. Seven. All of you. Twenty-two. Oh, follow you to... That makes sense, though. It's dark. <laughs> Six. Dark and far away. Zorag, you're still. Your rage is consuming you, and also. This thing. I'm blind just... as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Ivrin, you seem to notice that it seems to be heading toward an outcropping at the base of the castle. Um, it's getting close to making it 
to its destination. It's like some stones down there. Speed it up, lads! It's getting away! Alright, then it would be... Aelin, did you go yet? Not yet. yet. Alright then, so... Uh, about how far ahead is it now? Oh boy, it's pretty far. It's 80 from Zorag. No, it's further than that, because it was already 30... Or, 25. 25 plus 80... 105. Um, so from you, it is. Oh, how far was it from you last last round? Was it 75? Was it? It was 65 last round. The so 65 plus mm -hmm. the 105, 170 feet. Math. Feet. Okay, so. Make a trusty calculator here. Because math. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling. Okay then. Dang, alright then. Uh, I don't think I don't think I can use message as a cantrip to confuse the hell out of it, can I? You can always try, but it oh, oh, probably won't yeah, work. I'll, yeah, but you can yeah. try it. Let's. Uh. Eh, I still have arrows. All right, Aelin is going to be. She's running. Uh, she is going to use her cunning action to dash to get the six to get the full 60 feet she has her short bow she is going to fire but because it's going to be still more than 80 feet away her short bow will be at disadvantage so okay 10 and misses yeah as it just hits into the snow it sticks in. All right, she's just gonna yell, "Get back here, you stupid son of a!" And uh, she cut herself off, and that'll okay. be her turn. Zorag, it's your go. This thing is, as we said, uh, it's one hundred and five from me. One hundred and five from you. Well, I'll I'm gonna dash close gap to twenty five, but I mean that's just how it's gonna be until something else happens. So. Mm -hmm. I'm taking off after it. You can't shoot it, Zorak? Um, no. no. I mean, I can try the short the bow, distance. but it's, uh, I got a close distance, and then all, most of my range stuff is limited. I mean, you got inspiration. <laughs> I don't know what, what good it'll do, but you have it. I'm just going to dash. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're 25 behind it. Uh, Ivrin. Fucking shite. Um, I'm gonna run my 30 feet forward. And that would put it probably, what, like 100 feet off from me? Alright, uh, for some reason I forget every single time you go. You were at 75 before, correct? Yes. Yeah. So what, what, how much movement are you using? 30. Okay, just 30. Just 30. Gotcha. And then... There. I mean, yeah, it's far off. I can't even remember exactly. It's We'll go with 105, sure. Fuck it. Well, if it was at 75, move 80. It, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It moved 80. Oh, so it would be 125 away from me. 125. How far away is... Uh, Zorag's 25 feet behind it, so Zorag's 100 feet away from me. Yeah. 
I can't even fucking die. Oh, I can't get to him. I can't get within 60 feet of him. Oh. You can't get within 60 feet. <laughs> Roshi uses a longbow, right? I'll use my bonus action to inspire Rumshu again, using my last Bardic Inspiration. Um, I'll say, hit the fucker and kill it and I'll believe everything you have to tell me. And then I will use my action to dash another 30. Okay. That's my turn. Cool, cool, cool. Valida, here we go. 60 feet of movement. That's it. <laughs> Rumshu runs 30, fires off an arrow. Uses bardic inspiration. Kill him, Roshu. Oh wow, he hits. Um, hey. Not dead. Oh damn it! Oh no! <laughs> Fuck. Uh, it is very weak. Rumshu hits it square in the back. It's really like limping now, um, but. When the arrow sinks... No, it's already done that this turn. Sweet. You're good. Uh, on its turn, it sprints full speed into that cropping of rocks and stone. Uh, so, if you guys want to move as a group for now, you can. You can still chase it down there. But instead of having to go through the turn order where everybody's just going to be like, I'm going to move, I'm going to move. You know what I mean? Did it go behind a rock or can I see it? Uh, It went into this, like, cropping here. I, it You can't see it, probably. Okay. I'm going to chase it. Yeah, I would still be hauling ass up to it. Yeah. Okay. You guys, uh, you guys say anything to each other while you're chasing it or anything? I'd imagine I'm still pretty far ahead of the group since I'm running like 80 yeah. foot. Oh, I just try to catch up to everybody, essentially. Okay, you chase Aelin the is, chase. Aelin's going to send a, a message over to uh, Rumshu to ask, uh, where does this lead? Uh, Rumshu uh, looks up uh, toward it. That's, uh, that's the Undercroft. We don't go in there, usually. Alright, she'll send another message asking, uh, Are there more monsters? I, I don't know. And uh, she'll send one last message to him and go, You're a great shot. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Puke and he... Dash is a bonus action, Connie, as a goblin. Uh, Ooh, fuck, I wasn't doing anything. Who's shooting an arrow every time? Is an action, yeah. I is is it a bonus action to dash or is that just a disengage for goblins? It's just disengage and hide. Is it yeah. just disengage? It's disengage and hide. Yeah. Uh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you guys sprint until you get to this stone. Uh, what appears to be a stone entrance of a crypt. Um, and I guess we'll. Do you guys want to end there or do you want to go in? Because I do have. This section prepared. I know Equa can play later tonight, so it's up to you guys how you're hey, feeling. Oh, I'm here, Tom. I'll, I'll go in if you all go in. I want to kill this thing. Okay, Let's so you you reach the outside of this stone, uh, this crypt with this stone archway uh, built into the side of the the like kind of small cliff that the castle itself is built upon. Um, you. Enter. I'm gonna bring you guys over here. Should it's probably gonna be all black because dynamic lighting's on. Um, I'm gonna drag your tokens in. 
Wait, everyone. I'm very nearly tapped of spells. I can do I, an offensive, I, or I can do an invisibility on someone. I haven't had any spells since the troll fight. I'm I'll really honest, I'm I don't hear any of this conversation because I just kept running after this thing. So. Offense it is. Great! Sorry, I have, wouldn't have rage anymore either. No, he doesn't. But yeah. I can still run 80 feet around. <laughs> connection has run out. Aliens just, grum Aliens just grumbling to herself was like, why did I learn frost? I could have learned fire, but no, I wanted to make snowflakes. So the order probably would have been Zorag, Aelin. I'm just thinking who was the closest. Oh, they would be in the back. Ivrin, <laughs> Rumshu, Valida. Probably, yeah. Sounds fine. You guys have your tokens next to you. Yeah, see but him. I don't have my torch. Right, 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 right. I'll get you your torch. Thank you. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah. Okay. I see shit that I probably shouldn't. That's okay. Yeah, it's the not a wall big deal. doesn't block everything. Yeah, it's a little weird that it works that way. I. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing when it comes to dynamic lighting. Um, no. Volley didn't need the torch. Please, please. Your night vision distance would be... Torches are... 20 bright, 20, 20 dim. 20, or 20? 40. Yep. 40. And then oh, dimming for 2020 20 vision. Cool. Save. So you should be able to see now, I think. Oh yeah, I can see a whole lot of shit. All right, so you guys enter this crypt. Uh, it's kind of it's obviously cold, like everything is. A um, little damp, like it's it's not as cold as outside. Uh, to enough where like the ice is starting to drip and melt a little bit. Um, there are lit uh, blue flame torches on the walls. Uh, let me grab Reacher as well, which, unfortunately, you guys can see the whole map for some reason, so I'm just going to grab that and hide it. <laughs> well, all that matters is the people the... who are watching who can't see. Have you worked with the orange and blue line lines on the dynamic lighting layer? No. That's how you get it to where walls block stuff. Yeah, that's okay. So as you guys enter the crypt, uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to track where this thing went. Okay, so anybody doing that, either roll survival or perception, if you're uh, trying to find this thing. Or if you're keeping an ear out, eye out, etc. Roll Nate, I'm exhausted. Six. Okay. So to the 16. south, uh, Aelin, Zorag, Aelin, Zorag, um, you hear the shambling in. Six. Zorgold. Yeah, Zorgold and eight because he has eight. exhaustion. Right. Okay. So Aelin, you hear, uh, <laughs> you hear. The chittering teeth and shuffling of some skeletons to the south uh, and you hear some weird like bickering to the north um, it's like I need you to get your head on straight come on um, and you do see a trail of blood, however, that leads further in. Aelin will point out the blood trails and uh, speak quietly to the group. Something to the south of us. People talking to the north of us. And she'll point out the blood trail. as like, like, I think we should 
go follow the blood trail first. Right. Biggest threat first, and then whoever's talking. But what if they leave? Do you want to Don't know how long them? they've been down here. If they hear us fighting, they'd probably leave. How long has this been down here? This place? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I won the castle. I didn't, I didn't build it. So you've never been down here? Uh, not really. It's kind of scoured and shit. Well, if someone's down here, maybe they're living here, since this one never bothered to check his basement. You all think it's better to go after this thing than we can do that instead? I don't want to let it take any chance to recover. It's on death's door as is. We should kill it now. Alright. Okay. It's not trail. So you guys continue to follow the blood trail uh, through this entranceway, down this small corridor, until you hit a square room uh, with these stone sarcophagi. Uh, and as you approach, you would have heard uh, some chittering of skeletal teeth. Um, as well as this digging on stone kind of sound. Um, or scratching. You guys can all move yourselves uh, north here. Hold on. I'm just, I'm struggling to do shit tonight. Here we go. <laughs> so you guys would, can feel free to come up into this room if you want. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what you would see in front of you is these two skeletons and the lanky long figure of the beast that you were hunting kind of knelt down and trying to crawl into this hole in the back of the crypt. The skeletons turn to look at you as you enter. I'll just pull out my javelin and throw it at the fucking creature that's trying to crawl through the hole. Okay, I'm sticking with the same initiative. For some reason, you guys can't see it, but uh, okay. Aelin is up. Let me add the skeletons to the order. Aren't we, wouldn't we start at the top again? If you guys want to restart, we can, sure. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but... Okay. Um, we're starting at the top. <clears throat> I guess Aelin did send all those messages anyways. Where's the top? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll count that as my turn. <laughs> Alright, so Ivorin would be first. Nice. Um, surprisingly enough, I don't really have anything that doesn't make noise. So, it's Balls. I don't want it to get away. It's um, 45 feet ahead of me. Bastard. Alright, fuck it. I'm doing it. I pull out the card with the die on it. And I point it straight towards the thing. It's a 10 foot radius sphere. So, uh, I could just about get all of them if I positioned it right here. Are you casting? Shatter. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. How high is the ceiling? Um... More than 10 feet? Probably somewhere around there. It's going to be close. So... Um, Bane's gone, because it's been over a minute, I assume. Mm -hmm. So each of them has to make a con save. 
straight roll. Uh, uh, skeleton got 12. Other skeleton got four. Uh, <laughs> the beast got double nat 20s. <laughs> My god. What? Yep. Well, so it still takes damage, it still takes half damage. Um, Holy shit. That's my last second level, you guys. So 12 to the skeletons and 6 to it, and there is this thunderous boom, and I assume everyone in the dungeon can hear it. Yes, yeah. It's extremely loud, booming sound, like you said. Uh, you watch the skeletons uh, just shatter. <laughs> Their bones scatter across the floor. Uh, oh. This beast, for some reason, its HP got reset. Oh, give me a second to find out what it was. How much does it take? It, uh, it passed, so it takes half, correct? It takes six, six thunder damage. Let me go back to the last page just to see. Oh, not that one. This one. It was at... <laughs> You're not going to believe this. <laughs> is it seven? So... This is what happens. You cast Shatter, and the force from the hit uh, just manages to, to crack into this beast. It turns around, and you see that form shift and shoot toward you, uh, Zorag. And right in front of you, the beast collapses before reaching you as it becomes corporeal again. As Ivorin has defeated it. Well, then use the rest of my turn to draw the cutlass, and I'll say, "There's no way in hell that everyone else didn't hear that." Prepare yourselves. Oh, and I yeah. turn. Yes, yeah, shit. Oh, Folly does swear in doors and start sprinting back to the other room. And she'll dash so she can get in the way of anybody that might try to get out of the get out of the ruins. Okay. Uh, you as you're guarding the entrance, you do hear a few skeletons um start to clamber their way from the south. Rumshu. Oh yeah, Rumshu, Rumshu. <laughs> but you do still hear that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rumshu runs into this room and gets his arrow readied to fire at uh, anything um, that looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> the skeletons start to come out from the self path. Like that. Rumshu fires. <laughs> Hitting. Not killing. It's alright, you still have one inspiration, I think. Uh so it's Aelin's go. Uh Volida has sprinted out of the room with Rumshu to go block off the exit. All right, then. So before Aelin moves, uh, she wants to look to see if there's anything coming through that little hole that the beast was uh, was at before. Okay, yeah. So you go over to the hole. Um, yes. This shouldn't so be she'll here. just go... That... Okay. Uh, so you head over to the so hole. Do... Yeah, about here. And you see these stones scattered on the ground, at, and it looks like this beast um, had at some point broke this wall do down and kind of dug a tunnel somewhere. Uh, so there's this tunnel leading into the, the ground um, and heading just deep until it's too dark for you to see. But it, it seemed like it burrowed somewhere, and you guys caught it while it was just trying to squeeze its way back in. All right, Aelin will just uh, be drawing up her sh short sword and say, Tunnel here, potential, potential unfriendlies. 
and she'll just draw her sword at the ready. All right, uh, Zorak. She said that there was something in there. There's a tunnel and potential unfriendly. She couldn't see anything, but doesn't mean there could be something there. Could not be something there. Uh, and I'm just going to run out into this <clears throat> central chamber and get right up beside the skeleton. Okay. Yeah, you run out there. And uh, I'm just going to swing twice. Swing away. Uh, the first one shatters the skeleton. I'm not raging, by the way. Yeah, second one misses. But this one shatters into pieces. Goes flying back against the wall. And that'll be my turn. Ivern? I will move. I don't be failing the... She didn't see anything. Uh, I'm going to move dead center of the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, I can do this. Haha. <laughs> yes, I do have range, so I've got Vicious Mockery. I'll cast... I'll cast Vicious Mockery at the Skeleton. <laughs> down below okay. and I will look at it and I'll just go I don't even want to come up with a pun for you you're just so fucking lame <laughs> well, I got nothing so wisdom save for him uh, 18 <laughs> succeeds so takes no damage <laughs> makes no sense <laughs> okay I mean it kind of does because like I feel like a skeleton you wouldn't be able to do this too but like it's fair it's fair skeleton's wisdom is not high in my opinion well, anyway. um Valida well, Valida just raise her eyebrow at Ivor and this Zorix got it she's gonna start heading up here cause she needs to see why they aren't trying to run out here yet okay, you're gonna head second. north yeah 15, okay Valida starts to head north oh there's a skeleton you see a okay. So in here, as you as you come into Actually, this I don't room, I think I can technically see it yet. Yeah, you probably wouldn't There's see it there. just yet. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to see anything yet. Okay. She's playing goalie. So yeah, she's gonna hold her action. If anybody anything approaches her, she'll attack it. Okay. Uh, the skeleton runs out of the room toward Ivorin. Uh, getting between Zorag and Ivorin and is going to swing its short sword. Six. It misses. Uh, its joints look stiff. It was like the like this really awkward swing. <laughs> and it misses. Aelin? Alright. Aelin is going to ignore the tunnel for now and she'll dash into the room. I believe it's to right here. Okay, yeah. And, uh... Can she actually use her cunning action to do a dash again? Since it's a bonus action? I'll... Because uh... I'm not 100% sure about that because she used her action to dash and then that would be your, uh, mo your full m movement doubled, right? What do you guys think mm -hmm. on that ruling? That's interesting. Yeah, that's because as a rogue, it's a cutting action that's considered a bonus action to either dash, disengage, or hide. Right, right. Because, like, obviously you can dash... I feel like you can only dash once a turn, so you could use your action or your bonus action, but not stack yeah. it. That makes sense. Yeah. It's really up to you. It, it changes technically. Yeah. Te dashing okay. technically means double your movement. Running double your movement. So 
Yeah, I'm going to say that you can only take the dash action once. All right, okay. sounds good. Then Aelin will uh, just hold her action ready if the skeleton moves uh, towards her. Okay. Um, just to let you know, though, you could... Oh, right. She you already could use used your bonus, her. You could use your bonus action to dash there and then use your action to fire the skeleton if you want. I'll say she used her cunning action uh, to dash yeah. over here and uh, we'll hold an action at the ready because uh, she... I'm having such bad luck with that bow. I'm not going to jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zorag. Uh, your face, uh, the skeleton has its back to you as it's trying to swing at Ivrin. I'm just gonna black like after I dispatched that one and I saw that one run. As I, as it was running, I was like following it with like uh, two axe swings. All right. So back. There's the first one. Yeah, that hits. Four ten slashing. Okay. And then. And Second one is yeah, twenty six. Uh, this thing shatters poof, and hits it against this wall back here. Dead. So, and then I would probably move in a little bit to poke my head around this room to see if anything else was coming. Okay. So you head south into that uh, area. You don't see anything besides in here is, um, what looks like. More, more sarcophagus, sarcophagi, uh, but there's not like the stone walls in this area. Um, maybe they were in a rush to build this extension. Uh, you're not sure, but it's not. It doesn't have the nice stone walls in here. But uh, it looks clear. Clear down here. Uh, I probably come out of no all right Ivrin. okay um hearing zorag say that that's clear i will move my 30 feet next to valida uh i didn't see anything here so i too will ready Yeah, it's tough. I'm going to ready the Cutler Swing for if okay. I see anything come up and attack Valida or myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Valida, it's your go. Um, what you guys, Ivrin and Valida, what you would now hear is um, some shuffling up to the right and again, a voice that's just like, Oh, come on, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Go over there. Tell me what it is. Ah, uh, you're useless. You're useless. Valida. What do you hear? Yeah, like, hearing that, and doesn't she wasn't like, Go kill whatever it is. And she's standing there with the torch, and nothing's come out yet. She's like, This. Of we, what's going on back there? What what's who's back there? Uh, yeah, you just call this out. Uh, just a friendly bard. Um, and my f companion. I'm gonna approach. <laughs> And she'll walk forward. So. Uh, <laughs> she'll you walk around the corner. You see a headless skeleton. <clears throat> like reaching around the ground. Uh, looking for something. I'm looking at a skeleton, but I'm here. <laughs> I mean, she can only talk so much, so that will be her turn. Oh, yes, don't mind the skeleton. He's... me. <laughs> He's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, the skeleton continues looking all over the ground for something. It failed its roll again. Um, 
and you watch this, uh, Valida, you see this, like, this ghost uh, quickly peek its head around the corner at you and then back. Um, swear, I'm not going to hurt you. Please go away. Oh, better yet. Can you get my head? His head. Our uh, head. What are you what are you doing down here? Um I presume I'm doomed to live an eternal life of misery. Presumed? Why? I'm not sure. Um Yeah, let's we come out of initiative now, by the way. If you yeah. guys wanted to of all come in or anything, uh, feel free. Yeah. What does everybody else think they would be doing? Well, Ayla's oh. going to go back and investigate the hole, and she'll just uh, say over to Rumshu because he's the closest of it, and just go, uh, sounds odd. I'm going to go check out the hole back here. Okay. I'll go with her. Okay. Rumshu and Aelin go to check out the hole. Zorag, where do you go? Hole. Oh. I'll probably just hang out in here, you know, just kind of keep my <laughs> okay. eyes open. So Ivor and Valida, you're here um, up in this this top section. Um, this ghost peeks his head around again. I'm going to come out now. The name's I, Dulapar. I, I, Dulapar. I'm Valida Takoon. You're not gonna attack me? Not if I don't need to. Okay. I'll get that head for you. <laughs> She'll walk forward. Oh, oh the ghost is oh, there. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She'll pick it up. Do you want me to put don't it on? Don't want to accidentally possess you. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. watch Please out. don't do that. Uh... Do you want me to put it on for him, or? Oh yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Put the skull back on the body. Uh, you put uh, the skull on the body. It like turns its head and like locks in, and then it swings at you. Oh, cool! <laughs> All right, <laughs> four piercing. It hit me. Uh yes. Well no sorry, okay. eighteen, sorry. Oh uh, eighteen will hit me because I have my oh. I have my torch up, so technically I don't have my shield. Oh no, come on. Come on. Damn it. Oh, I have to swing back. <laughs> that hurt a little bit. Would you swing back? Um I mean I I think it's just acting like an idiot because it's a skeleton. So I'm asking for confirmation from the ghost first. Oh, you asked can I swing at it? Yeah, it should I swing at it. I don't know. Can you put it in the coffin? I can try. <laughs> Let's just try to grapple the skeleton. Yeah, so give me an athletics check. Not really. uh, 13. Okay, let me roll. See if the skeleton can beat that. Probably not. Uh, nine. So, yeah, you grab the skeleton and you just <laughs> throw it into the uh, sarcophagus and, like, shut the lid. Oh. All right. Well, that's awkward. Yeah, Dulapar. Hey. Uh, so what's what's your story? This is very strange. We chased a monster down here. Did not expect to have a ghost that's not also malicious. Uh, chased a monster. Yes. Hmm. Pale. Bony. Yep. Antlers. Yep. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, scary shit. Yeah. I suppose. I suppose you don't have to worry about it being a ghost and all. No, not really. It's the one benefit of being a ghost. Um 
Sorry about um, myself over there. That's. Oh, so it is your body. Yeah, that's my body. Uh, yep. Well, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't blow it up then. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Um, actually, I was trying to get it to go find my violin. Uh, but is it close? I don't think so. I was buried with my bow. Like the uh, violin bow or like your yes. archery? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. The violin bow. Which is kind of funny because, see, the physical bow, I know you didn't, you probably didn't see, but when you put the skeleton in there, the physical bow is right there. But if you look at my hand, I have one right here as well. It's very weird. Being a ghost makes no sense. Yeah. Yes. I couldn't imagine. Who's this? Everyone is there and just like kind of <laughs> looking. This has been a lot of weird today. <laughs> this for is him. I Bruno's was gonna let himself introduce, but he didn't say anything earlier, so Hi. I'm Ivrin Silvertongue. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Sorry for the rudeness. No, I'm no, it's fine. Former self. Um Sorry, it's been a long day, and there's been a lot happening. Um, we we killed the, the the thing, the creature. Great. So um, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, cool. I um, yeah, it didn't really bother me. I'm a ghost, so. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I. Yeah. No, you did say that. I'm sorry. I forgot. Yep. Um. So talk. Talk to me about the bow. I've got a violin. You want to play my violin? I would love to play your violin. Thank you. Sure, yeah, no, it's it's fine. I'll, uh, what what kind of person is this? So you're looking at a uh, an elf, male, uh, long uh, hair, probably was blonde in life. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to see. It's spectral, so it's kind of sure. like a. It's just a brighter spectral color. <laughs> you you're about my height, so the the length of the thing should be about right for you. Um try 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 it out. And I hold out the violin. Okay. Uh it goes to it holds out his hand. Or he holds out his hand. Um and you go to give the violin and it clanks to the floor. <laughs> or whatever noise a violin would make. Ah. Uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't pick up the head earlier. That's that's fine. It, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll pick it up and dust it off. Oh no! Did I damage it? Please don't tell me I damaged it. Uh, no, no, no. This is a hand me down anyway. It's fine. What, it's not a what, what not make a kill. is it? Um, I hand it over. What make is it, Grizz? Is it of an important make or is it of a shitty make? It's it's really nice. It's extremely <laughs> nice. This is a uh, this is from um, Exquisite Violins, the brand. <laughs> no, way. in Waterdeep. Exquisite, yeah, exquisite yeah, yeah. violins in Waterdeep. Yeah, Waterdeep. Yeah, that's uh, where I'm from. That's where I got my Von Strahd. Really? No way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wow, I've always wanted a Von Strahd. Yeah, if you find it. Please bring it back here and put it with my body so I can have it in the afterlife. That would be splendid. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. No do problem. You know where, do, I mean, do, do you know where it would even be? Well, um, let's see. I had it when I went to sleep. And then they killed me in my sleep. Um, They buried me with the bow. I, I don't know why... Better not use my violin as firewood. Oh. Von They'd never use a Von Strahd as firewood if they knew that was good for <laughs> You're them. Right. You're right. I'm being silly. I, I really see it as a courtesy kill. We were all starving to death. And I was just playing music to try and boost everybody's spirits. And, um, and they killed you. Uh, when I slept, they killed me. So I, I think it might have been a mercy kill. But, here. then again, 
they exhumed my corpse and then ate the flesh off of it only like a week later. So, I don't know. And like charm and people could have, could have probably done with listening to the music a little bit more. Hmm. Um, well, there's no point in having a in, in stealing the violin if they don't have the bow for it, right? So it's probably around here, somewhere, probably. Yeah. Uh, last place I had it was in the castle throne room. We were all held up in there. It was a while ago. It's hard to remember. It's. Uh, okay. uh, uh, give me a sec- yeah, r- room show. I think I heard a car on the airline. Go on, uh, I'll I'll be right here. Aelin, what have you been doing? <laughs> Aelin has been inspecting that hole, uh, this, and tried to, and seeing how big it was to see if she was able to crawl through it or not. She was no way was she sending Rumshu to go in, so she's just been inspecting the hole and debating about yeah. crawling in uh, a few feet. So um, you, the hole is big enough for uh, you to fit in and, and crawl through. Um, there's not enough for like two at a time. Like you couldn't be side by side, but there is enough room. You're not like squeezing through, you know what I mean? This creature had to fit through this, and this creature, uh, it's thin, but its shoulders were broad, it had really long arms, stuff like that, so you can fit in one at a time with ease. Uh, if you do crawl in, you crawl in, you know, how how far do you think you would go before you were like, okay, it's time to turn back? Uh, pretty much it would just go up until that first corner and then uh, turn around to go back. Cool. So yeah, so- you... You crawl in, you know, 20 feet or whatever that is, and you realize that the teep's going upward. Uh, It's definitely sloping upward, and you could make a faint light at the end. Huh. All right. She did her little mini investigation. She might check it out later, depending on what the group is doing, and she's going to head back out. And probably at that time, Rumshu's name was called. Yeah. Uh, Rumshu comes up to you guys. Uh, Zorag, Rumshu walks past you. Again, giving you an opportunity to join <laughs> the group if you would like to. I was tell him, like, tell him to hurry up in there. I'm tired and I have to take a shit. <laughs> that's why I'm like standing in the room by myself. I'm just going to rock in a little bit. Aelin will gradually make her way over and hang out with... Uh, Zorag. Such a Zorag line. <laughs> so eventually Rumshu makes his way over. He's like, oh, uh, what's up, Rakaz? Ghost. No, it's fine. This is um this is du- Dulapar. Dulapar. And um he was looking for his violin that he lost in the throne room of your castle. Where is it? It's very important. Ah, yeah, throne room. That's the that's the big room behind the marble. The marble door that you shattered. Right. Great little fucking shite. Uh, so we're going there next. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, your castle. Yeah. His castle. Well, it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. I am Dulapa. Uh, I once served as a bard here for Lady... Uh, my memory is slipping <laughs> so long ago that I died. Cannot answer that question. If he says Del- gentle. Delcendra Amzar. Ah, uh, Yes. We'll try not to get eaten. It's no fun. Eat, eaten by what? Oh, I... The undead. Fellow humans. Oh, sure. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah, sure. And bring back that violin, please. I will do that. Are you going to be able to play it? My hope is that when you put it in my coffin, it will appear in my hand. If not, fuck it. You can have the bow and the violin. I've been muted for. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I deserve that. Um, let's see if we can find it first. And I never want to take a violin away from its true owner, of course. Respectable. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's go. Great! You're coming with. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. Let's go. As I pass Rumshu on the way out, I give him a pat on the head that's a little too hard. And kind of a little bit knuckly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just grits his teeth. Okay. Uh, you all meet back in the central room. Aelin's there. Zorag's there. Uh, do you... Aelin's eyes goes wide. It goes... And she all uh, make soft curses in uh, Elvish at seeing a ghost. Oh, yeah, we have a ghost with us now. So what the fuck are... is that? He understands those curses, by the way. Nothing to be afraid of. I'm Dulapa, Bard Extraordinaire. Aelin will just shake her head and go, and just smile back and go, uh, Hello, Aelin Edamath. And she'll do a polite bow because the guy's an elf. Mm. Uncle Darren taught her to respect elves. He does a very flourishing like wave of the arm to a bow well shall we go rest so we can uh head in that room yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to just double check and see if there's anything on the body of that big old thing that I we killed um, for of worth and then we'll we'll head off and Aelin will just mention to the whole group of them that uh, in that little hole area is a kind of a tunnel that leads kind of up and potentially back to the surface. Right. Shoot, do you know about that? Ah, or done. I'm in... Um... If it goes up, well, this is near the throne. This, the throne room should be just about above us. So you're telling me if we go in that tunnel, we're going to see all the shit that you put down there that you didn't want Valiata to see? I mentioned that orb. Aelin's heading back over to the tunnel. She wants to go check it out now. <laughs> Something had direct access to your his secret room. Oh, hey, no, uh, I'm sure the the metal bars are still intact up there. We better start heading up that tunnel and find out that that thing's still in there, or I'm going to go look myself. Okay. Aelin's already in the tunnel. You guys are all going to climb in through there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's possibly a missing orb currently. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys all <laughs> climb through this tunnel, uh, starting to head up into the, um, what Rumshu has described as the throne room. That is where we are going to stop the episode, because we went over, like, Fair. a very good chunk. So, I hope you all enjoyed watching so far. It was a very long <laughs> episode. I appreciate those of you who stuck around. Don't forget to drop a like. Leave a comment. Share this episode with a friend. Put in your favorites. Do. do all the <laughs> things. Hit the notification yeah. bell. Do the dabs. Uh, thank you it's again, though, for all for watching. Uh, and we'll find out what happens next time. And don't forget to come back on uh, Monday for Amoris and, uh, and Wednesday for the other show that I 
I forgot the name of. Name of the Frost Maiden. That's yeah. it. That's <laughs> Prime the one. Of That's the Frost it. Maiden. Now I'm mad. I, I can't. I can't roll my R's. <laughs> All right, everyone. Next time, uh, Aelin goes off to a room while he just walks the other way. <laughs> How dare you forget the name of my show? <laughs> Sorry. He's Bye, everyone. everyone. <laughs>